Hey guys, welcome to the 54th, 54, holy cow, 54th live stream, live show. Uh, the I, I started numbering a little differently, so it's not that I've done 54 Tuesday shows, I just started numbering them sequentially. So hopefully you guys are seeing me. If not, I left a note saying to refresh, hopefully that will help. Hopefully you guys are seeing me okay and hearing me and you actually didn't mind that little intro that I was playing around with. I don't know if it's really that appropriate for uh, for this type of show, but it was something I was playing with and thought I would throw it in to see if see if that worked. I got my tea today, so hopefully that will that will help me out. So let me go through and see who is online. We got a bunch of people who are on the show or the pre-show, I guess I like to call it. So for you guys who are here, um, wow, my screen just popped off. So I am going to have to. Wow, that's weird. Let me uh, let me see if I can turn that back to technical difficulties. Can't believe this stuff happens. <laughs> now I'm waiting for it to come back on. This is awesome. Good old Samsung. Just shuts off whenever it wants. I've never had that happen before. So let's see if we pop back up or if I have to do a reset. And well, darn the luck with the technical difficulties. I tell you what, give me one second to try to figure out uh, what the heck is going wrong here so I can get my, my thing running. Otherwise, this will be, uh, will be a problem. So stand by one. All right. I think what happened is, is I, uh, I have an Xbox that's also connected to this configuration, and it, uh, it decided to try to, uh, to take over. So let me just hit, hit reset on my external display here. Sorry about this. Now, I, w I will say that this is a first. I haven't had this happen. There we go. Okay, so now we're getting closer back to... Okay, it... <laughs> Sorry about that. Holy cow. That's crazy. All right. Let me get back on here. That was bizarre. Like right in the middle of the thing, it just went bink. The, the screen went off. All the comments shut down. My computer almost reset. Holy cow. So hopefully you guys can see me and, uh, and hear me okay. And hopefully there's not no annoying buzz on the... Uh, uh, and if there is, let me know, because I'm trying something a little different to see if I can do a monitoring while I'm also tying everything into the camera. I tried that once before, and it uh, it created some noise and stuff that was kind of annoying when I was looking at the replay. So let me know if you guys are having any pr problems like that. So let me see who we all have here. So Supreme God was one of the first people on for the pre-show. Uh, so welcome, Supreme God. I don't think you've been on a live stream before, but I think I do remember seeing you in the comments. So welcome to the... Um, Welcome to a live show. Shaver1234 is online. BB is on. Says, hi all. I won't be able to chat much nor be able to listen until the upload tomorrow. Have a great chat. Uh, hit the like button. Well, thanks, BB. I appreciate that. And hopefully you, uh, you, know, you can watch the show tomorrow on the, on the replay. So, and hopefully this time I'll be able to actually key some, uh, some times into it. I wasn't able to do that on the last one. Um, just, it just time, man, it just seems like time is just flying by. Okay, so uh, Jenny Wren is online. So welcome, Jenny. Says, uh, oh my God, what did I say? Screen is frozen. Um, for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, but that does appear to be a problem for the uh, mobile app. For if you're watching it through, I don't know if it's work, if it's a, if it's a problem if you're going through the uh, uh, web browser on your mobile device, but I can tell you that on the YouTube app on my phone, every time I pre-watch the show and I'm waiting for, and it's counting down, once it starts, it does, it just goes to zero and it just, it just hangs. I have to close it and reopen it. So if hopefully uh, I did post earlier, hopefully people, if they're having issues, they can see that. And if you guys see anybody who is saying, Hey, is there no video? If you could just throw out there before, if I don't get a chance to catch it, to tell them to uh, refresh, I would really appreciate that. So, uh, Bernice Chase is online. So welcome to the live stream and welcome to the channel. I think you're, I don't think I've even seen you in the comments. So thanks for jumping on. 
Uh, Supreme God says, hello. Rebel Law 1 is on, says, hi, all. I said to refresh your screen if you doesn't work. <laughs> so sorry about that whole problem in the beginning. You guys have to let me know if you like that little intro thing or if it even worked. I'll have to look at that for the replay. I've been playing with some trying to use some extra features from uh, from within OBS to see if I can, I don't know, even make this kind of cooler. I don't know. So Bears Cat says, uh, glad to see so many here. Yeah, wow, we're at 35. I really appreciate that, guys. Let me hit the Twitter button so that it'll actually pop, pop a tweet out saying that we're live. Uh, I guess I could do the normal YouTube-y thing and saying if, uh, you know, share it and all that kind of stuff to let more people know. MegTow Assassin is online, says, good evening, friends. Welcome back, MegTow Assassin. Good to see you. Maura uh, L., Good question. When do they stop? I am so tired. And we'll get into that into a minute. Uh, for you guys who are on the newsletter, I sent out a note chatting a little bit about what tonight's topic is, as, as well as giving a link to this, uh, to the chat direct link. And so once I go through for a few people who are here, I will, uh, will chat a little bit about this and I would love to hear your guys' version or your perspective on when and if they ever do stop. So uh, Blue Bell is on. It says, I made it on this time. So welcome. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the live stream. Joseph says, hey, all. Gleet's online. Welcome, Gleet. Glad you could jump on. Whoops, and my screen just scrolled on me, so now I have to figure out where I was on, uh, on, the, on the chat. Wow, I scrolled up high. Sorry about that. I need to, I need to select stuff so I can see it. Vernice Chase says... Uh, Try having a narc who is bipolar as well. Oh, I tell you, you know, when they're comorbid, uh, and you know, and someone had asked that before, and I, I'm, as, as another little interesting note, there's a creator studio app for uh, the mobile devices. And that's um, a lot of times whenever I'm on the go, I can answer your guys' comments that way, but they broke it and it makes it really hard to answer comments. So I'm, I'm behind on that because when I'm at uh, work in between meetings and stuff, I, I, don't really have access and my phone is the only way to do it. And it's, uh, yeah, so I'm kind of backed up on comments, but, but anyway, someone had asked a question of, could they be, could they have both? And yes, there, you can be comorbid. Um, you know, you can be a narcissistic comorbid with bipolar, uh, or histrionic or, you know, the different parts of that. That is not uncommon that, uh, actually it's more common that they have traits from different areas. Um, so, you know, that is something to keep in mind because just when you're dealing with somebody, you might think that you understand what they are when in fact you, they might be a, 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 a mesh of different things. And if you guys have ever looked, actually Debbie is making a, uh, a care package for me of, uh, the sections on her DSM book about cluster B and some of the diagnosis stuff on it. Not that I would ever do that or, you know, try to diagnose anybody, but to just have a better understanding. And it's really complicated. If you look at the DSM on, on the way you have to, to, uh, diagnose somebody or try to ascertain if somebody has a cluster B personality disorder, it's pretty complicated. Um, and it even says in there that, you know, you might more than likely you're going to have to interact with that patient or, other sources to really get a determination over a course of time of what they're really dealing with. So it makes it tough because it's hard to really figure out what, what we're dealing with and how to, um, well, legally how to deal with it, I guess. Which actually brings me into something else that I will hit here in a little bit, but let me continue on. So Dave Nail is on and says, uh, 54. Did we jump up to 54 for a while? Oh, 54 for the, uh, for the show. I know. Isn't that crazy? I think overall I have like 300 and some odd videos. Um, I was <laughs> in my feed earlier. There was a uh, one video that was from, uh, um, Oh crud. I forgot his name. Uh, anyways, but the, his one video had like 40, 400, 000, you know, almost, like, almost as many views as my entire channel in his one video, Ross Rosenberg. That's who I was thinking of. It was one of his earlier videos. It, it was a recommended video on my feed. So, um, yeah, it's, you know, 
it's I, I, I do appreciate the, the success of I've had, but in the grand scheme of things, you know, it, sometimes it feels like it's just a little drop in the bucket. Phil Smith is here. says, hey, guys, remember that for many Christmas is about the kids. Let's try to make it a memorable one for the little folks. Kids are often caught in the middle of their parents' conflict, unfortunately. Man, Phil, that is absolutely true. And it's and it's hard sometimes to keep in si- uh, keep sight of that because of all the conflict and the chaos and everything that's going on. But thanks for saying that, Phil. That's a really good, great comment. Jenny Wren says, back on. Great. Okay, so it looks like you reset. All right. Uh, Kay Lilly is on. Says, hi, everyone. Good question. When do they stop? And we'll hit that, and we'll talk about that more. And I see that there's a couple of comments. Uh, Gleet says, they never stop. Ugh. Uh, Phil says the kids deserve a break too. All right. Dan skis on. Wow. I haven't seen you on a while, Dan. So thanks for jumping on. Says hello, Dwayne and group. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Um, Dave nail says, yeah, they are. Um, they never stop. Yeah, exactly. And, th- and that's the thing. They, they really don't, you know what, maybe I'll go ahead and just jump right into that part of it. Let me highlight where I'm at in the chat so I don't miss it. And then maybe while I'm talking, I can look and see what's, what is going on. Um, And hopefully I don't stick my eye in the microphone like I did the other day. So, okay, so a lot of people, especially in the early stage of this, are are wondering, man, when are they going to stop? When is this chaos and this stupidness going to stop? And the and the hoovering and and all the little emotional games and the mind games and all that stuff. And unfortunately, the short answer is they don't. And what you're going to notice is as you adapt, as you learn skills to effectively deal with them, they're going to adapt. They're going to try different techniques. They'll, they'll come at you from different angles. And it's, it's really incredibly frustrating. And a lot of times you can feel like, you know, just, it's like, God, if they could just put a little bit of that energy of just creating chaos to try to work together, things would be so much better. But at the end of the day, the problem is, is that they can't, they enjoy the chaos. They, they, they thrive in the chaos. And as a result of that, it's just, they adapt to it. They adapt to whatever you're trying to do to continue to make, you know, things as complicated as possible. A lot of times if they can say no, they're going to say no, just because they can not because it's the right thing to do for the kids. It's because in their mind, they're exerting control. And the problem is, is especially when your kids are in the middle of this, if your kids are placating them at all, like for instance, last, not this, not this Thanksgiving, but last, was it last Thanksgiving? Must've been the Thanksgiving before last. Now that I think about it, uh, I had an opportunity to, to take the kids to a, uh, a little outing, uh, Debbie's daughter was throwing something together, calling it a Friendsgiving. That was, uh, you know, like the weekend before Thanksgiving. And, you know, the kids said they wanted to go. Um, I had mentioned to the ex, Hey, you know, can, uh, can they go? And the kids, all of them, except for the youngest changed their mind. They'd no longer wanted to go. They weren't interested. They never wanted to go, you know? Um, and you know, it, the problem is, is whenever your ex gets that type of feedback, what they'll do is they'll say, well, I'm not going to force my kids to do something they don't want to do, even though they're not, you know, realizing that they're undermining the entire process, uh, and creating an environment where the kids know that if they say yes, it's a problem and see, and, and, and what happened is in my situation for that particular year, my youngest did want to go and she said she wanted to go. And still wanted to go. I was angry that the other two didn't want to go. The her her uh, brother and sister. So I'm like, okay, fine. You know, one kid wants to go. So can they go? And then there was all kinds of restrictions. Like you know, you can you can go from this time to this time. And effectively, what it would meant because of the drive is I would have been able to drive up there, walk in, stick around for 25 minutes, and have to turn around and drive back. So ultimately, my youngest didn't get to go. And, uh, when I asked, and I know I've made a video about this before, but when I had asked later, like, you know, what was so important? What were you guys doing? Nothing, you know, nothing. They didn't had nothing going on. Didn't go see, you know, it wasn't like they were, they did absolutely nothing. It was all a control mechanism. And that's, the, that's the, so rolling that back in, they will do that type of thing. They will try everything to create as much chaos and chaos and havoc as they possibly can just because it can. Now, what happens is, I mean, so, okay, I mean, if you're looking at this, you can be going, oh, dear God, you know, how is this ever going to get any better? 
And what happens is, is you change your, your perspective on how you allow them to control you and mess with you changes. And it, it, it's, it's really bizarre because in the beginning stages of it, every time they do it, it really angers you. At least it angered me. It really frustrates you and you want to fight back. You want to do that tit for tat and try to hold them accountable, you know? And then, you know, later on what happened and, and effect and what happens and what happened with me is later she wanted to do something with the kids. So then it puts you in a, pro, it puts you in a, in a, in a spot where it's weird because they can do things to torpedo the kids, like the story I just mentioned with my youngest, but you know, it's like, but we always relent, right? I mean, you know, if it would have been a flip side story and it would have been like, well, 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 that's too long for the kids to, you know, I don't feel good about our kids being out until, you know, nine o'clock or maybe it was 10 for the time to get back. I can't remember what it was. It wasn't that bad. I mean, it was like, it was earlier, it was a weekend, you know, yeah, whatever. I'm just saying is, is that typically we would turn around and make accommodation and go, okay, well, whatever. And it's just one time we'll make it happen. And, and that's the thing. They don't, they can't think along those lines. It's, it's more of how can they maintain control? How can they continue to push your buttons? And when, when you basically effectively disconnect the cable so that those buttons are no longer connected to you, that's when things really change. So that was where to kind of roll this into, to, or to wrap this up, I guess, for that particular topic, and then we'll get into what you guys are saying about this, is you change. You, your perspective on what their impact or what they can do and how it impacts you change. Now, for me, I think what I've done, which has even be more, been more helpful, is that she still thinks she's able to get to me. So she's focused on, on thinking that she's winning and I'm just living, right? And I think you guys will all get to that point too. So I hopefully that, that I know that's kind of a quick rendition or a quick little talk on, uh, on, on that topic. And, and hopefully that makes some sense. And, uh, you know, I mean... I, it's just frustrating because they don't really stop and it can be six years. I mean, I'm six years into it. The same stat, the same crap is still going on. It's a little bit different because I don't re react to it the same way. So I'm not giving her that supply, which is then egging her on. So let me see. I know we got some new people who just popped in. I see Shannon's online, Shannon O'Brien. So welcome Shannon. Glad you're online. And Sharice Sepia Blackman is online as well. Derek Sutton jumped in says, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Double standard everywhere. Yeah, that is absolutely true, Derek. So let me scroll down on my normal comments. Oh, Steve Hartman says, uh, sound clean, no buzz. Video is good. Hey, thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. Actually, that'll really help out because I'm trying to test something for some uh, interviews and stuff that I'm getting ready to do. And uh, I'm hoping that I can use a similar configuration and be able to monitor the, monitor this mic and hear what they're saying at the same time. So this was a big little test on that. Big little test? This was a big test to make sure that that would work. So so thank you for that feedback, Steve. I appreciate it. Blue Bluebell says, uh, Bluebell, change your name from Baby Blue. Okay, just so you know, Dwayne, had a hard time pronouncing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, called you, <laughs> I just called you Blue. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. So uh, so thanks thanks for, for trying to throw me a bone on that. I appreciate it. So, and I'm so bad with names. I appreciate you guys giving me, uh, giving me a, I don't know if a pass is the right word, but, but, uh, but, but let, giving me a break on the whole name thing. So uh, I see Brian Camancho is on, says hi, Dwayne and everyone. Welcome, Brian. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the live show. Thanks for jumping in and for, uh, for not lurking and actually jumping in and saying hello. Appreciate that. Ooh, Steve Hartman says, Bluebell, how did you change your name? I'd like to change mine for these chats. Okay, what you can do on that, and I've actually gone through that before. Let me see if I can, if, if I can pull this up. Uh, if you go into your, uh, let's see here. You go into your creator studio, and let me see if I can pull this up. I'm going to try to pull this up, see if this works. Okay. So when you go into Creator Studio, if you scroll down to, uh, on your left side there, into Channel, and you click in there, and then you go into Advanced, and then you have this option right here for Account, and you can change the name of your channel. Or what you can do is you can also create another channel. You just have to have a phone. or I think you can create two channels a year off of one phone number because that's how it validates you. But that is how you would go about and do that. So let me 
pop back in over here. And that is absolutely not what I wanted to do. I forgot. I see, I was worried that was going to happen and I forgot to hit the button. So let me, uh, let me go back over here, get this set up. So when we jump back over here later and I will, so hopefully that, uh, answered your, your question. I think that was Steve. Okay, so I'm just looking at the comments. Ooh, Bears Cat says, I just finished turning over my financial inter inter interrogatories today. Yeah, that's not, uh, well, I mean, I guess it's part of the process. I know I didn't enjoy that, so I'm sure you probably did not as well. Joseph's online. Um, uh, he says, I got the app. It's all good now that I've refreshed. Yeah, I don't understand what, what the deal is with that. That's really frustrating. Jenny Ren sends you up on the phone, but sure, uh, I'm grand now. So I guess that's the thing is if you're on a mobile device and you uh, don't, and you wait or you come into the show before it starts, it doesn't automatically start. It is really, really frustrating. I guess I'm gonna have to send uh, YouTube a thing on that. I, I have sent them some issues on some other problems and uh, they're not really getting back to me which is kind of annoying. So especially whenever it was working before, I hate it when they break it. Lorraine Sullivan says we just had a, uh, had a seven handover in as many as, as many days over Christmas period agreed reduced to three. Wonder what he wants. Oh my gosh. Seven handovers over Christmas would have been, that would have been complicated. I mean, I guess technically if I look at my situation, I, I do quite a few handovers. Well, you know, I mean, with our normal schedule, but that's, that's, that's frustrating. Well, I'm glad you got that reduced, Lorraine. And uh, hopefully things are calm-ish. All right. Shannon O'Brien says, I think it sounds great. Thanks, Shannon. I appreciate that. <laughs> Dance Key had said, uh, speaking of tests, everyone needs to test that like button. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. I mean, so far it worked for 21 people and I appreciate that no one's hit the down button. Now that probably somebody will hit that just to, just to test that as well. Jenny Ren says, I'm chilling here, Dwayne, listening and enjoying reading all the chat. Kay Lily, Kay Lily says, uh, so my husband always did the crazy, that crazy talk stuff when he would disappear and I'd ask him what, et cetera, he was doing. Yeah, that's... Yeah. You know, it kind of goes back to what I, I mentioned this. I don't know if it was in a comment or a video where it, these folks it, say and tell us who they are. I think, no, it was a comment. I was talking to someone in a comment and they were listing some things that their, their ex or their soon to be ex had done and was saying, you know, are they a narcissist? And it even included, I think there was one of them was that uh, they you know, that they have no empathy or, or I, I can't remember what it was, but it, you know, these people, it's like they operate in the open, but we're so blinded by the love bombing stage and that illusion that we want to, that we want to be real, that we don't see it, that whenever it's thrown in our, not thrown in our face, but whenever that reality is told to us, you're like, oh, you're just kidding, or you're just, you know, you're just beating yourself up, or, you know, you're just being hard on yourself or whatever. And it's later when you realize and you look back and you're like, oh my God, they actually told me exactly who they were from the beginning. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think a lot of us have stories like that, where that is absolutely the case that, that something had happened and they were just honest about it. You know, I mean, I can look back and, and my ex was, uh, was, uh, absolutely honest about having abandonment issues. And I, you know, I mean, I didn't know about personality disorder. Now, you know, granted that's more uh, borderline, but I mean, it was bad. I mean, I, and, and, and at the time I was like, no, you know, I, and this is the one, this is the person I'm going to be with. And, and I'm not going to leave her. I'm not going to abandon her. I'm going to, I'm going to stay there. Right. But I mean, it's like, it was, it was that and a couple of, and a bunch of other things that were just indicators of, of that something was really, really wrong or not right. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really amazing. And I know I've told this story before. Yeah. Dansky says, Dwayne or Dave, you really can't make this stuff up. No, it's crazy because you know, this, well, that's why these channels are so important because when you're going through it, it feels 
crazy. It feels like you, it, it, it can't be real. So you either think it's not true or you think I'm going insane and I'm, I'm exaggerating this or I'm misrepresenting this or, or it, this just can't be real because this stuff doesn't happen. This can't be real. And, and I think that's a lot of times why a lot of us get stuck in that mode where we talk about it a lot because it's so unreal it's so crazy. We just don't believe it that we keep talking about it almost like we're like, yeah, it did happen. You know, yes, that did happen. Yes, they, you know, whatever the different story is. Like I remember, you know, one point uh, my son was needed, you know, needed to go to the doctor and uh, I made an appointment for him, called the ex and said, hey, you know, I can take him to the doctor. Are you? This was like before the divorce was final. This was in the very early stages. And I'm like, hey, I got an appointment. He, he was uh, having a hip problem. He couldn't walk. He was in a wheelchair. I mean, he's disabled anyways, but, uh, you know, it, it was, it was progressively getting worse. Um, called the doctor, said, no, we need to get him in, called her and said, Hey, I have an appointment scheduled for him today. You know, do you want to take him or I can take him? And her response was, he has a hair appointment today. You can take him on a different day. You know, and it's like those things, it's just like, what the, and, and you know, and then what happens is, is you're telling other people about this story because it's so unbelievable that you have to tell it because you don't believe it. It's like, you, you have to like, you know, you go to your friend, Hey Bill, man, this just happened, you know? And, and, and you're, I mean, I don't even know what, I, you know, I mean, I think a lot of times I expected someone to say, well, yeah, of course, why wouldn't they do that or whatever to, 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 to invalidate my concern that it didn't make any sense, you know? And then when they would say, holy crap, are you kidding me? You know, on a couple different things, you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. That, that isn't normal behavior. That, that is messed up. Right. The problem is then when we're, when we're talking about all this stuff, then we start to look crazy and it doesn't help our story as well. So, all right, let me, uh, let me start getting back through the comments. I know I kind of getting, uh, getting behind. Well, am I getting behind? Did I miss stuff? Maybe it scrolled up and I missed a bunch of stuff. And if that's the case, I apologize. Uh, let me see where, where we are. Angela Marks, welcome to the live stream. Says not lurking, listening and work, listening and working. I don't mean that as a slam. Let me just clarify. Anyone out there who is checking the channel out or has been a long time person on it but doesn't feel comfortable saying anything, that's okay. I don't mean to, I, I'm not trying to call anybody out. That's, that's fine. So, uh, <laughs> so touche on that. So Angela, thanks for, uh, for joining the, uh, the live stream and uh, commenting and not lurking. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, where, where, let me see where we're at. Oh, I did. Okay. So I did miss some stuff. So I apologize about that. So I'm trying to, uh, uh, scroll back up to see where I was. And, uh, and, and guys, just, just to, I'll throw this back out there. If you make a comment and I miss it, I, you know, there is absolutely nothing wrong with saying, Hey, I made a comment. Can you, you know, um, I made a qu question earlier. Uh, that happened last, uh, last live stream. There was somebody who had put, I, I don't it actually kind of, actually, I think it was blue who, uh, had put a bunch of comments up and I missed every one of them. And then towards the end, she was like, Hey, you missed, you, you know, you missed my question. I'm like, Oh, you know, and I did. So on that, if I miss something, please throw it back in the, in the chat and, uh, and I will either re-ask the question or uh, remind me that I missed it. Yeah. Blue says, yes, it was blue. Yeah. <laughs> and, and honestly, that was a great conversation. Actually, I think you're the one who pushed, uh, pushed the live stream into the three hour mark. Uh, but it was a great conversation and a really good question. And I, and I almost missed it. So I'm really glad you did that. There's a cat says my narc told me stuff about his ex-wife too. I know I now totally understand her perspective. See, that's the tough part is, is like, how do you determine if you meet somebody and they say, you know, you know, I had an abusive ex, it's like, how do you know? Well, and, and you really do, right? I mean, well, let me back up. The question is, is how do you know whether they are in fact the victim or are they an active participant, participant, or is it completely exaggerated and the ex was the victim? I think the way you figure that out 
is you, you have to look at the actions and the words, right? You know, we all have empathy. So if you ran across somebody, uh, I, well, I would imagine that most of us now are probably a little more suspect whenever we hear somebody say something like that, you know, we'll, we'll give them, you know, the, the initial, uh, you know, empathy, and, but keep our guard up to double check. Right. And I think that's really uh, important because I mean, the same thing. I mean, I remember my ex telling me about how all her exes prior to me were bad and they were, she liked to call people jerks. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that I'm now in that category, but you know, so-and-so was a jerk or so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that. And they, you know, did, you know, oh, I'm not even going to go on the laundry list, but just that laundry list of stuff that they did. And I never once like a knucklehead questioned that I was just like, Oh, that's so terrible that they were, that they were so mean to her. I will never do that. She will never have to worry about that with me. And I'm, and I would imagine anybody who's been through this, that's the same type of thing. Whenever you, uh, when you have your ex who's telling you about all their exes and how they were mistreated, then you're, you're like, you know, you want to, you want to heal that. And, uh, it's tough because, you know, you've, you put yourself out there, you're vulnerable. And if the person is a bad person or is a toxic person or is a narcissistic person, then you, you know, you open yourself to get hurt. But I think that if we keep our eyes open, we can detect and catch whenever it's not real and, uh, and mitigate some of the damage that's going to happen. Ooh, Blue says you can change it right there in your Gmail also. I was not aware of that. That's interesting. Shannon O'Brien says, Dwayne, I've tried searching within a channel like you to uh, showing us on Thanksgiving, but I couldn't do it. Not sure if why. Okay, let me, tr let me try that. Let me read that again. Oh, you tried searching within a channel like I showed you on the Thanksgiving, but it, but I couldn't do it. Not sure why. Hey, Shannon, what channel was it? And, you know, say what, if, if, I mean, if it's a channel, I can, well, if it's appropriate for my channel, um, I tell you what, you know what, let me do this again. What I'll do is, and, and this will kind of segue into my uh, conversation. I'm going to mention about command, the, uh, the command, the courtroom Wait, from Wendy. So command the court room. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up. Maybe let me just check. Cause as soon as I hit this button, I lose the live chat. So, um, Okay, so <clears throat> if you go to a channel like Wendy's Command the Courtroom, and as it's loading, because it's always slow when I try to load this for some reason. Hi there, it's Wendy Hernandez. Hold on, let me try I'm to. Uh, okay, so I did actually reach out to Wendy, and uh, we are having some email communication. So we're looking to potentially do some collaboration type stuff. So I'm excited about that. I didn't get to email her today, so I've been really busy. So if she happens to be watching, I'll, I'll email after the live stream, but if you want to search on someone's channel, go to their main channel page. And when you're at their main channel page, you click on the search button and, uh, on this. And let's say, um, uh, I'm trying to think of a good, a good term, um, changing custody, right? And see, and it pops up with videos on that. So now you said that uh, it was, let me pop back over here, that you were having some issues on my channel. And let me see if I can find that. If you can tell me what you were searching for, I could just walk right through it. Let's see here, uh, Shannon, if you can, let me, let me highlight that. Let's see if I can see what you were looking for. So, What I'll do is I'll say, let's say you're, we'll go back to my channel. Well, okay. So if you're on my channel, you go to the main page. It's a little different because it's, I'm logged into it, but the same thing, if you wanted to click and just look for all the videos I have on bad, uh, depression, right? Depression. And it'll pull up all, now see the thing is, is I do keywords and stuff. So that helps a little bit, but, uh, if it's in the titles, it'll pop up as well. So, and there you go, you get all of the videos within that. Cause otherwise, see if we go up here and I just type depression, you're going to get, you know, videos. And if you're, you know, if you're trying to find it on another person's channel, it's really tough, right? Cause then what you'd end up trying to do is do depression and do a dad, dad. 
And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, but see, then it gives extra stuff as well. So uh, let me just go back here and come back over here. So hopefully, Shannon, that helps. Uh, sorry, it wasn't working out for you. Um, not entirely sure what the deal with that is. Okay, so let me let me get back to where we were. Oh, Vernice Chase says they all they can also cry on demand. Some are great actors. So, they're all great actors. They are able to fake emotions and uh, uh, and play a role to try to uh, imitate other you know the appropriate responses. I remember watching a video with Sam Vaknin, and it might have been a collaboration that he did with, uh, with Richard Granyan, where he was talking about, and this has been a while since I've seen a video, uh, and I'll see if I can find a link for it later, but uh, where he said, you know, he, it's like a Rolodex, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to awake, you know, click, 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 okay, so I need to be sad, you know, plink, plink, put the little put the little chip in his head. He didn't say chip, but you know, like put the card in and follow it. And that's the thing he's, he's mimicking reactions and that's what they're able to do. And it's really tough because it, it, uh, it, it makes you think or question yourself of what you're really dealing with. Wow. We're actually at 47 people so far. That is, this is a pretty good live stream. So thank you guys. I appreciate that. Sharice said, uh, earlier says, I love this chat. Uh, even if I don't ask a question or make a statement, I enjoy and look forward to Tuesday night live chats. Oh, thanks, Sharice. Uh, I appreciate that. So let me scroll down here and try to get current. Derek Sutton says, it's sad I never looked into psychology or personality disorders until my ex. I thank her silent, uh, silently every day because of the lessons I have learned because now I can see the red flags everywhere. Yeah, it's tough, right? I mean, because you don't think about it and you're not even aware of it. And then what happens is whenever you get sucker punched, you know, and you're like looking for answers. And then when you find the answers, it's like this, just, you know, the sky opens up and the clouds and the angels sing. And, and then you feel like someone drops a pile of bricks on your head because even though you know you understand what they are now they don't stop and they just every time you try something different like i was saying earlier they modify their process eddie says he's uh out of here gonna wake up at 5 a.m so just so you guys know and hopefully eddie doesn't mind me saying this uh he has started producing uh, uh, he posted his first video the other day i wonder if i can pull it up um let me see if I can do that. So you guys need to uh, to give him some uh, some YouTube love and channel love. So I'll pop it up over here. So I hope you don't mind, Eddie, but uh, he posted his very first video about narcissism and parental alienation. I watched part of it. Or you can see right there. I, I watched it until my internet died at work, which I have really crappy internet. And uh, yeah, so so give him some uh, some channel love and. Uh, and hopefully, Eddie, you'll be making some more videos. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do to put yourself out there. So um, proud of you, buddy. And uh, and you know, we'll see where it goes. See where it goes for you. Yeah, Shannon O'Brien says, yeah, check out Eddie's video. He's awesome. So see, there you go, Eddie. It's starting right now. Just so you guys know, I was his eighth subscriber. So I don't know where he's at now. Oh, he's at 13. So so there you go. He's already grown, almost doubled. Maybe by the end of this show, you guys can, maybe you can double it and get him to, to 20. All right, let me, uh, and he says, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dwayne. I appreciate the big bro. Definitely not easy. God bless. God bless you too, Eddie. Yeah, it's tough. So, um, I, I was talking to another YouTuber the other day. Um, I won't, I won't, I guess I won't use her name, but, uh, she popped up as a recommended friend on, on Facebook. And so I friended her and, and uh, I just, I haven't seen your videos in a while. And she said, yeah, I just, I can't do it anymore. It's just, it, it got too much, you know, people needing help and it being triggering and stuff. So it's not the easiest thing to do. So, uh, you know, you got to do it when it's right for you and understand the, uh, the, the effects that it has on or can have on your life. Um, can be really positive though. All right, let me get back. Let me get back over here into the chat. I think I'm a little bit behind.
Sharice says, yep, they tell you who they are from the start. My ex told me when he married his wife years ago that he didn't love her. What he left out was that he's incapable of love at the same time he was honest. Yeah, it's, and see, that's a really, I mean, it's a tragic example, you know, and and the, and, and Sharice, I'm sure that you, you, you process it to think, oh, okay, well, they did it for, you know, you, you, you try to make, make it make sense. It, it's really tough. I mean, that's, that's, you know, but yeah, you're right. They are honest. Kayla says, yeah, nothing but unbelievable stories. I was accused of kidnapping someone an hour after I got home from work it was a bad, bad day. When was that? Wow. Okay. Uh, Karen, that's not so great. Daryl Hunt, best thing is to live well and ignore ignore crazies. Absolutely, Daryl, and think or uh, welcome to the channel and welcome to the live stream. Okay, so now I'm now I can see I'm looking at comments I've already looked at, which I always hate that when I get mixed up on these things. Bernice uh, Chase says, "Do narcs really love anyone outside of themselves? Don't think so." Chase, I don't, or Vernice, I don't think they love themselves. I don't think they're capable of loving anyone. Uh, are they capable of focus? I mean, if you said, are they capable of focusing on anyone out, outside themselves? I would say no, but uh, they don't know how to love, um, you know, and they focus on themselves because that's the only thing they can do. They can, they're trying to get their own needs met and that at the expense of everyone else. Dan Ski says, Angela, it's my fault. I hope you feel better. Every day I wake up, it's my fault. According to the ex, that's pretty funny. Eddie No says they, uh, that they always tell on themselves. All right. Oh, embrace I uh, embrace INTJ, which I think I remember what that is, and I can't remember. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the live stream. Says we are better at recognizing foreshadowing in movies than we are in reality. Narc foreshadowing. That is an excellent point. Wow, that is an excellent point. That's like the horror movies. Whenever somebody you know, they, they do something and they drop the knife and they walk away and you're yelling, no, yeah, you're right. That is a really, you know, that's a really interesting point embrace. I, I, you know, that's a, it's, it's easier to see it. In other, and it's also easier to see it in other people. It's really easy to see someone else in a, in a negative relationship, but not our ourselves. Kay Lily says the police had guns on me. I can't even do the story justice here. That is that does not sound like a fun day. Karen, when was that anyways? That is horrible. Lorraine Sullivan says the past uh, one was a psychopath. Yeah, funny. That's what she, funny, huh? Yeah, not so much. I guess you can, you know, it's like, what do you do at the end of it? Laugh or cry about it. Oh, Angela said name of Eddie's video. It was, uh, oh, I think I pulled it off the screen. Um, let me go back, see if I can, it was, um, narcissism and parental alienation uh just do a search on eddie knows and uh he's the dude wearing the yellow shirt with the hat backwards so in in his little profile picture whoops went the wrong way now i'm trying to back up okay now i gotta get back to the comments i get, get got sidetracked sorry about that And he says, uh, they are chronic liars and are always the victim in their heads. Their actions and words are not aligned. No, absolutely. You know, and it's weird. I was talking to a mutual friend a few months ago and she was saying how, you know, the ex is still is just super bitter and angry and is still a victim. Yeah. And, uh, the problem is this particular person is, uh, is she's the second ex or second, not second ex. She's the second wife. Right. So, so some of the things that my ex is doing was, has been done to her. So it's really triggering for her whenever she, she's both sides of what's going on. And, and it's just, it's weird. They just can't move on. But again, it's because they need that chaos. They need the drama to, to keep them going. Meg Tao assassin says my ex narc always repeated the same story about her ex, where she was the victim five years, always the same story about her ex, literally one story over and over. And always, yeah, Joseph says always the victim. Yeah, exactly. And uh, now and Meg Tao assassin, more than likely you're the, you know, you're the new person in that either the stories of all about you or it's, a pattern. See, that's the funny part is, is they don't realize when they start telling people about all the series of abuses that they've had, that 
anybody who has any type of awareness can go, mm, that something's not right there. You know, you normally don't, every relationship isn't a train wreck. But there's a lot of people who will fall victim to it. I'm not sure so much as you get older if they do. You know, I mean, I, I wonder, uh, you know, if you're in your 40s and you're still playing that game and you're talking to other people in your age group, would would new relationships still believe that, hey, is that legit that everything is, you know, everything was a disaster? And, you know, I don't know. It's kind of an it's a interesting question. Um, all right. So let me try to, okay. Uh, K Lily says, yeah, it was bad. I was about to go to bed and there were cars in my driveway. It was dark. I was terrified then saw the police and probably you thought, oh, okay. The cops are there. So I can, I'll go out and see what's going on because the cops are there and you know, you're not a criminal. And then they, then they start targeting you that had to be i just can't even imagine neo dad i changed my name all right well i'm glad that worked now I can, now the problem is i won't know if i can remember who who you were oh that makes it tough makes it tough for me that's cool though now i i, I know that's not really a tech channel but sometimes i think it's good for me to go over that type of stuff because you know it it a lot of times anonymity on the on these type of forums I think is really a good thing so that you don't especially whenever you have a hoovering X and uh, you know they maybe they're tracking what you're doing or whatever now the thing is is I, I need to publish I need to hit the publish button on this video is you still need to do some things to protect your accounts because if they've compromised your Gmail account it really doesn't matter what you change it to because if they can get into the main account then they would still be able to uh, follow what you're doing and look at what you're doing. Now, technically on something like this, they would have to be in this chat right now watching to see what you're saying. Or since I put it on the screen right here, hey, I remembered to right hand on this one, uh, then you would, um, then they could, uh, I mean, they could watch it, but I mean, really is, they, well, I mean, they, I guess they might. I guess somebody might watch a two hour, three hour live stream just to try to see what you're doing. But switching your name to be anonymous is not a bad thing. Joseph says, I got mine recorded saying she played the cops like a damsel in distress. I'm transcribing it tonight. Yeah, it's, I mean, hopefully you can use that. Hopefully you can use that to, uh, to catch her in her lies. Hey, guys, just make sure that you... Um, you're, you are in an area where you legally can record because if you're in a, if you're in a two party consent state, you can, uh, and you're recording somebody without their knowledge, you can actually get in trouble. I was reading an article, not necessarily about our situation, but about a mother whose daughter was getting bullied she uh, put a recorder in her backpack, sent her to school to just record the day to see if she could catch what was going on to kind of like validate what her daughter was saying. Cause I'm not sure if she believed it. School found out, called the cops. She's now being prosecuted under a felony for uh, recording without, um, without two party consent and uh, the delinquency of a minor. And, you know, so just be careful, right? I mean, I know a lot of times people get away with stuff in family court, but especially the narc, I, it's like, isn't it amazing how they're able just to get away with, it doesn't matter what the heck it is, they can just get away with anything. Uh, but I would really hate to hear anybody get into a problem where they, uh, they, they cause themselves an issue with that. So on that, Joseph, just make sure um, if you have an attorney and you're using that, that you've talked to them, uh, that you're okay with that. Um, cause what you don't want to do is walk into a situation if you're representing yourself, um, as long as one party is aware in my state. Okay. So it's a one party consent state. So then you're probably fine. So if you know, and you've already checked, then good for you and looking for, hopefully your, uh, what did you say? It was a, a, what's the meeting? Okay. Let me look where you said the meeting was. Is it a deposition? Well, whatever it is you have going on tomorrow, I, you know, keep our fingers crossed for you and uh, send you good vibes and hopefully everything was going 
going well, or will go well. Okay, let me scroll up. Terrell says, yes, we are victims, but uh, best option is not to play the victim. Yeah, and I think part of it is, is that, you know, there's a, there's a period of time where I think we have to acknowledge our victim status, right? But I think staying in there just isn't, isn't healthy. So I think if you can uh, uh, acknowledge that, you know, yes, this happened. Yes, it's legitimate. And that's the, that's the key, right? It's the validation stage. It's not, it's not that, uh, that, that badge of honor or badge of victimhood saying, you know, this is what happened to me and, you know, feel sorry for me. It's more of, yeah, it really happened. You know, yes, you experienced this. You experienced significant emotional abuse uh, or more and, and that it's real. But I think once you, once you get that validation, at least this is what it was, this is the way it worked out with the way, this is the way it played out for me. Once I, I had that realization and I had the validation, I didn't want to stay in that mode. I didn't want to be, you know, the victim anymore. I mean, I, I started making jokes about it and I mean, it's just, it's just, I didn't want that to define, define me. Um, but I mean, it took a long time to get to that point. So, you know, I mean, just, you know, don't think that I, that I had a, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, I had the epiphany, you know, one week I'm like, damn, I was really, this really was emotional abuse. And then, you know, a week later, well, okay. Yeah. No more longer victim. No, it didn't work that way. It was, it was a long, it was a long process to get to the point I am today. And actually what I will say on that is it was a long process to go from realizing I didn't want to be a victim anymore to getting to the point to where I could not, you know, to get past that, that took a long time too. So, I mean, even whenever you, I think even if you're someone who's, who has said, okay, I'm tired of being the victim. You're not going to be able to do it overnight. It's not going to happen in an instant, in my opinion. And if you're able to do that, that would be really great. Uh, Neo dad says, okay, re uh, really going to bed now. See you all next week. Well, Neo dad, sorry, I didn't see you when you popped on. So if you're still here, welcome to the channel and welcome to the live stream. And I apologize that I didn't, didn't see you, you, you jump in. So Jasmine Moon says, uh, LOL, Neo Dad, just like a fly on the beach. I imagine he is a mosquito sometimes just buzzing in the background. Exactly. And that's really, I mean, it, it happens. And that's how things start to play out. MegTow Assassin had said, Covert Nar Cluster B is the most dangerous personality type. Uh, ooh, complete. Dang, it just scrolled right off the screen and I was reading it live. So let me, uh, uh, complete psychopaths with no empath and no compassion soulless demons yeah coverts are tough because they're able to hide it more i mean i think overts where they're in your face to where it's like whoa this isn't right but the problem is is that a covert which i mean i'm sure all of us are aware of this a covert can can push you push your buttons and then pretend but but do it i mean maybe massage your buttons is a better way to put it right i like can overt will go and then if they say, well, I didn't poke you. I'm like, I got a red mark right here. You poked me. Oh, I didn't poke you. Right. So that's, that's an over, right? That's like in your face. A, a covert would be more like they bump into you and you're like, Hey, did, did you just poke me? Oh no, no, I didn't poke you. I was, I was getting you, uh, I was getting you some tea. I was getting you, I, I was bringing something to you. I, I didn't poke you. That was, you know, no. And you're like, Oh Oh, oh, okay. That makes sense. Right. So it's more, it, it messes with your head a lot more. Um, not to say that over, to, you know, the other type of stuff isn't, isn't bad. I mean, they are bad. It's just different. Um, and I, I personally think coverts are worse because they're able to, to slowly break down your sense of reality. I mean, I, I get that overts do that as well, but, but you, but you see it, right? I mean, when someone beat you or hurt, you know, physically hurt you or, or something, you can go, ow, you know, Hey, you know, you broke my arm, you know, I mean, you can't turn around. I mean, I'm sure that people have been in relationships where oh, I didn't do that. You know, I, I was, someone wrote a comment earlier where they were talking about that, where, where, uh, you know, the kids are getting hurt and it's like, well, the kids are clumsy. They're running into the walls and stuff like that. The thing is, is that the person it's happening to knows, right? 
So Blue Bell says, mine is a covert. God's grace. Welcome, God's grace. Thanks for jumping on. Says, coverts are the worst, I believe. Yes, I like I just said, I agree with you. Jasmine Moon says, Chinese water torture, drip, drip, drip. I think you said that in another comment earlier, too. I, that, is, that is spot on. Okay, so let me scroll back down and see where we are. And it just moved on. Oh, I unclicked everything, and it moved. Oh, Shannon says, uh, had, I, when I got blocked in my driveway, I totally had so many things going on, I forgot all about recording. So, I, and I think, you know, I mean, it, depending on your area, like I said earlier, you got to be careful about it. But I mean, I did go through a phase where I would hit record. I don't have any of those recordings. There's nothing there. You know, I don't even know how many times I did it. Legal disclaimer there. Um, anyways, just because I figured if she turned around and tried to say I did something that, and if I was like looking at a domestic violence charge, um, maybe dealing with the two-party consent recording thing, if it could prove that it wasn't true, would be helpful. And it sucks that we get in these situations where that's what we have to do. Dread says, I got a lawyer today. Sorry for the caps. Just super stoked. Well, good for you, Dread. That's Steven, if I remember correctly. So hopefully that went well for you. I know that's expensive. It's a, it's a big move to do the attorney thing. Um, hopefully you got a good one, Dread. Elizabeth is online. I'm not sure if I recognized you earlier, but welcome to the, uh, welcome to the show. Glad you could jump on. Liz Hansen is on. Welcome, Liz. I'm not sure if I saw you before. <laughs> Emojis, that's pretty cool. Uh, Nargis Z is on. Good evening. It says, good evening, Dwayne. Good evening to you, Nargis. Glad you could jump on. All right, let me see where I where we were at. Man, is it just moved right back down again. I really hate it when it does that. Liz Hansen says, mine too covert messes up the mind. Yeah, exactly. Bears Bears Cat says, sometimes I think my narc would flip between covert and over. Ooh, that's a really great comment, uh, Bears. And the thing with that, you guys, is a lot of times a covert is covert until you catch them. And that's pretty much what happened with mine. Uh, she might have been, I mean, I guess in retrospect, there might have been some overt things that were happening. But once once their facades, you know, once the, once the, the, the gig is up and uh, they know they've been caught, they will switch tactics. And instead of being that covert person, they will start doing more overt, overt things. And you have to be prepared for that because if you think, oh, okay, I have a covert narc, this is what they're going to do. And you, you march in thinking that, oh, you have them all figured out. I guarantee you, as soon as you modify, they are going to switch their tactic. And if you're not prepared for it, it's going to take you by surprise. All right, so it's scrolling around again on me. Shelly F, welcome to the uh, welcome to the live stream. It says my son is in a relationship with a narc. She and their seventeen month old oh god she and their seventeen month old daughter live with him. He wants to break break up, but is terrified she will take his daughter and move out of state. Any suggestions? Oh, and their fourteen month old daughter. Okay, so the suggestion, all right, yes. Most, well, okay, this is tough, but if he's really worried about that, the way you deal with that, in my opinion, although you should still check with an attorney, is you file for either a legal separation or a divorce immediately because that will prevent her from leaving. Until that happens, there is nothing preventing anybody from doing anything. In my situation, if my ex would have been a little bit smarter, about the situation, all she would have had to have done whenever we were having problems is pick the kids up, leave the state, and never come back. And then if she waited, if I was a knucklehead enough to wait until, uh, until she was there long enough to become a citizen of that state, 
which I think in some state, some places it's six months, sometimes it's shorter, then she could have filed for divorce there and I would have been toast. So I was really worried about that. So one of the reasons I filed uh, initially a legal separation for two reasons. One was financial because I was worried about her uh, torpedoing the, which she did anyways with the divorce, but I wasn't anticipating that. Uh, so it was one to stop the, the hemorrhaging of funds. And the second part is I did not want her to be able to leave the state with the kids. So on that, uh, crud, I just, Shelly, if I'm saying your name right, Shelly F, um, that would be my recommendation because if they're in the same area, then that will, will protect him. If he doesn't do that and he just breaks up and let's say he moves into your, you know, into his old room in your house. And the next day she grabs their daughter and drives to a different state. There is no visit. There is no custody order preventing her from doing that. Um, only thing that will help in that situation is a court order. Um, I've known, I had a friend of mine at work who fell and fell victim to this. His wife moved out on him once, took everything moved out of state. He was trying to fix the marriage, uh, was traveling out of state to, to see him on weekends and killing himself, trying to drive, but wasn't even thinking about it. Uh, one day driven like the eight, eight to 10 hours, or maybe it was 12 hours to her house was sitting on the couch, uh, sitting at the dining room table, looked at a mail, saw that there was a letter from an attorney, looked at it and saw that she had secured an attorney for divorce services. And he basically went back to California, which is where we're from. And, uh, uh, you know, started trying to fight it. But, and even then he still lost. He, uh, she was able to, um, get neighbors to make up stories about him, uh, undermined his case. He thought he was, he went in thinking he had a winning position. Um, and she, he got ambushed and lost custody of his kids forever. You know, I mean, he, he does have a relationship with him. He's been able to fix his relationship with his ex. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's, that's your best bet on that. Sorry about that. I guess I kind of I kind of droned on on that one. So hopefully, Shelly, that helps helps you out. Uh, Shannon O'Brien said, "Angela, not sure, but basically, we're in a more liberal state such as New York. It's one party. David H is from Florida. In southern states, the laws are generally more conservative. I think in California, I think it's a two party state. But you know what? I haven't looked, so I'm not entirely sure. Okay, so all right, let me scroll down." Darn the luck. Sue K is on. Welcome, Sue. Glad you could join the channel because I think you're new and uh, definitely for jumping on the live stream. It says, husband is covert narc, raised two kids by myself, sent them to college. Unfortunately, daughter has lots of covert narc traits, but son turned out to be very kind and gentle. Why is that? Well, you know, that's kind of typical. It's like when, whenever people are going through this, they, they, they kind of fall. Well, let me back up. It depends on whether you believe in the nurture and nature uh, thing. We were talking about that during, I think, the last live stream or maybe the live stream before that, where there is some view out there that uh, narcissism or cluster B personality defects can be inherited. There was a Psychology Today article about that in September of 2016 that uh, talked about that. Uh, the other thing is, I think it's a, my opinion, just my opinion, is that it's, um, it's, it's a defense mechanism. Right. So your son, who is more empathetic, learned how to read the other person to to figure out what the other person wants to to get the, his needs met and to protect himself. Which I think most of us fall into that category. Right. Whereas people who take the other route to where they're narcissistic and they're more focused on me and they and they put walls up to where they don't address they don't deal with their own emotions and they don't care are unable to care about their, really their feelings or your feelings go down that road. Now, the thing on that is, is, I mean, in some ways you can try to, um, you know, work with them when they're younger to try to point that out. Um, I've done that with some of my kids, uh, to, and uh, to some success, it's, it's ultimately going to be a long-term view to see how that actually plays out. So hopefully that, uh, that, that at least is my perspective on it. And let's see the, I'm trying to, now I can't remember who said that because it scrolled right off the screen. Um, so sorry about that. 
Shelly F says, thank you, Dwayne. It's a very complicated situation, but your videos have been helping. Well, great. I'm glad they are, um, Shelly. And uh, if you haven't looked at, you know what, I'll, I'll, let me jump over because I know, I, I mean, you've probably already seen it, but it's like a thing I have to do, right? So if you might have, if I hit the right button, if you go over to the main channel and you scroll down to the, basically the first featured playlist, which is Mindset for Narcissistic Abuse Recovery, that is a collection of approximately 40 videos to help you basically deal with the situation. Uh, some, of them are, some of them are my older videos, but I think these, if you're really starting out, can really help give you a primer on what's going on. Some tips and techniques on and skills to deal with it and to talk about how, you know, to prevent, you know, just things to things to anticipate and prepare for on uh, some of the tactics they're going to use uh, and when you're having bad days and and that type of stuff. So I don't think I've actually added any new videos into this playlist in a while. Um, I really need to redo some of these, but I, I, it was just a way to make a, oh, it's got 43 videos, um, a way to have a collection because otherwise it's really tough just to go through a channel and just try to search through all their videos and try to find something or, or a series of what, um, you're looking for. I know, I know I've had issues with that myself. So let me go back over here and get back over to the chat. Mm. Should have taken some Advil for my back before I started. Bears Cat says, uh, I, now that I've learned so much about NARC, I think I can see it in one of my nieces. You know, and, and guys, the thing is, is that, you know, it's a legitimate risk. It, people who have grown up in these environments with with uh, toxic parents, you know, there is a strong, I mean, there, that's what they grew up in. That's the environment they grew up in. You know, I mean, I, I think that it's a real risk on that whenever people are in these environments, you know, we, we, we have a tremendous opportunity with our children, especially if, if, if all this stuff happens when they're a little bit younger, I mean, mine were a little bit older than I would have liked to, to really start trying to work on this. But you know, I mean, we, we're in this state where we're trying to mitigate the damage and trying to, to help our kids get through this. So. Narja says, I wonder too, Sue, why I have that issue too. And Liz, I was in a 20 year marriage with my narc and his parents and siblings. I was married to a narc, narc infested family. By the way, this was my first ex. Yeah, I think most of us come from an environment where this is prevalent and it makes it, um, uh, it, 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 not that it makes it, I'm trying to think of the right word, not comfortable, but it, it makes more sense when it starts happening and it's like, okay, you know, this is the way things are and we make excuses for it because it's what we grew up in. Cindy Towd says, I second that. I absolutely love your, your videos, Dwayne. I could listen to them all day. It's such valuable information and you are such a calm and great speaker. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Cindy. I appreciate that. Thank you for the support. Liz uh, Hansen says, the best book inside the mind of, ang of angry and controlling men. I hate the title, but can go for both genders. But wow, did, uh, did it help me see? Okay, let me look. Oh, I'm trying to move around. Let me see if I can. Okay. Mind of angry. I'm going to look at that. Let me see if I can find that. The, okay. Call me your mind. All right. Is this the one you're talking about? Uh, why does he do that? Why does he do that? Inside the mind of angry and controlling men by Lin, uh, Lundy Bancroft. So I think you're saying that, you know, there's a lot of things where, I mean, it might be gender specific, but a lot of it is, is if you can, if you can read past that, um, can really, uh, it really can help. So let me know if that was the book that, uh, oh, okay. So yeah, that was that it. So I'm trying to look at the comments now. I'm trying to see where did it go? It looks like I missed, missed. Darn the luck, it moved again, so I couldn't find it. See, I should have highlighted it and I didn't. Like a knucklehead.
Oh, though I did find uh, Dred's comment saying a thousand dollar flat rate. All his reviews are great. I uh, think I think he uh, he thinks my case is nothing. I can't wait to see the look on my narc's face at court. Oh, you mean okay? No, oh, that's cool. That's cool for flat man flat rate. That's awesome. Jeez, mine. Yeah, blue bluebell says I spent over fifteen grand. Um, I think mine was over twenty. It's God. That's just that's annoying. Dave Nell says, I faked live streaming my kids arguing with me and they ramped it up and attempt to make me look like a bad dad to the viewers lying about past abuse that never happened. Oh, that sucks. Unless, it, unless that was done in jest and everybody was laughing about it. That's, that's crazy. Okay. Oh, see, now I'm seeing I'm going back on an old comment. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so Liz is the one who said that book. So Liz, you'll have to say if that was the right, and you probably already did. Yes, that's the right book. Okay. So I'm scrolling back and I see where you an answered that. So. All right. Ooh, Bluebell says, mine weren't alienated until they were 14 and 15. I'm certain now, though, uh, hindsightly speaking, that my daughter has been worked on for quite a few years. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And if we don't know that, if, if see, the problem with that, if you're cruising along and you don't realize what's going on, and then, then the abuse ramps up, well, not the abuse, the manipulation ramps up, and then you respond in a way to validate what your kids are being programmed to think it's you're it's like you've lost before you even started you don't even know you're in a fight and then it's over um yeah that sucks <laughs> all right okay jasmine moon's jumping off so uh thanks for jumping on and it just scrolled off i was Yep. Good night, all. We'll catch you tomorrow. So I probably missed you. Uh, if not, good night. And thanks for jumping on. Haven't been on in a while, so it's good to see you on. Tansky says, Angela, we have to wait for all the inappropriate sexual advances at workplace to cool down. Wow. That doesn't sound like much fun. Bluebell says, uh, no doubt, Shannon, I'm new to it. I didn't realize who I was living with, I guess. His actually is a narc injury. I believe there is, um, there is a difference. Okay, I think I missed part of what that conversation was about, so sorry about that. Lisa Hansen says, broad spectrum of all weird mind-bending issues and personality disorders. Oh, in the book. Yeah, it's the right book. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. When do they stop? I was reading blue had answered, uh, Cindy about what the, yeah, the topic was, when do they stop? We talked about that earlier. Unfortunately, um, I don't have the DVR on, but once the live stream post, and just so you guys know on the longer ones, I noticed that, that, uh, the streams that are over two hours, if I don't pull the, the stream, uh, make it private until it finishes processing, it only posts initially it posts the first two hours. I'm sorry, the last two hours. And then, um, and it looks like we got a new subscriber. I don't know if they're on the live stream. If they are, welcome. Uh, so I pull it until it finishes processing so you have the whole thing. So um, at first it was kind of cool because it seemed like the, uh, the live stream was available like immediately, but uh, um, whenever it's cutting part of it, I don't, I don't think that's cool whenever you're missing part of the, uh, part of the first part of the show. So... Be kind is on online, so welcome to the live stream. Uh, Cindy Tao says, "Oh my God, twenty grand, Dwayne. Yeah, it was kind of annoying. Uh, I almost got stuck paying uh, uh, her attorney fees as well." Bluebell says, "Dwayne, I could easily spend eighty grand like my doctor did with her divorce." Oh, you know what? If you have the fund, the, these 
these things are, uh, let me, let me calm down for a second. You know, if you're dealing with somebody who has the funds who can play these legal games, then it's going to cost a boatload of money. You know, I think typically what happens is these things go until somebody runs out of money and then they stop. And if you, you know, if you can afford 80 grand, there's probably a good chance it's going to go that high because, you know, people get irritated. They want, they want the chaos. Uh, you know, maybe they just want, it's like, okay, if I'm going to, you know, if I have to give 80 grand to my ex, I'd rather give it to an attorney, um, instead of the ex, you know, that type of thing. It's really, really, you know, the family courts, ha it, this has to change. Um, it looks like Liz is jumping off, signing off. Have a great night. So thanks for jumping on Liz Hansen. Uh, thanks for asking some questions. So hopefully you have a great evening. Anyways, what I was trying to say is I, th I, I you know, it, family court really needs to change. It needs to be a situation to where, you know, it's like, in, in my opinion, and maybe you guys disagree with me, but, um, uh, you know, it, it should be like automatic 50, 50 and, and if somebody else is pushing it, they have to pay for it because otherwise it puts the, the person who has the money in an advantage. And if you don't have money and if somebody's willing or is able to make some allegations against another person, then you're just crazy. Christy Lee says, I had a friend that spent 75 K I'm at seven K and I'm done at that. I tried to settle, but the ex won't let it go, um, at that route. Yeah. Seeing the thing like with Christy saying, I mean, if, if her friend had 75,000 to spend on it, then they will, the attorneys will just suck that money out unless you have a really good attorney. Um, so, and I, I think I was pretty lucky on that, that I had a pretty good attorney. Be kind says, still going through divorce almost two years. What should I expect to change when it's finalized in a month? Well, be kind. Uh, what I would say is the tactics are going to change. Okay, so I'm assuming since you're here, you probably are dealing with a narcissistic ex, which means they're not going to share information. They're going to try to do things to make things as complicated as possible. They'll share information through the kids. They'll play games with uh, email like, oh, did you email me? Oh, I'm having email problems. Oh, did you try to call me? My phone doesn't work. Oh, this, oh, that, to try to just push your buttons in every way that they can. Um, you know, a lot of times whenever you, the, the divorce is done, you think that, you know, oh, thank God, you know, now I get my life back. And if you were dealing with a normal neurotypical person, that would probably be the case. But unfortunately with a narcissist or somebody with strong narcissistic traits, it generally doesn't work that way. So what I would say now, now that's not all necessarily bad. Be kind. I mean, don't, uh, my, you know, don't be looking at this going, Oh God, this never ends even though in some ways it doesn't, but if you understand what they're doing, if you understand what, uh, and I'll answer Shannon's comment here in a second, uh, what they're doing and what they're trying to do, then when they do it, it doesn't hurt as much. And the impact is a lot less. Okay. So Shannon O'Brien says, if 50, 50 were the law, what about if a parent is physically abusive? Well, the caveat on that is, is if it was a legitimate, okay, here. Okay. So here's the problem, right? If you have physical abuse and there's existing domestic violence stuff, you know, maybe the person's been arrested for it. Maybe the cops have been at your house a hundred times. Okay, fine. Right. That's a mitigating circumstance. That's legit. The problem is, is that you can have a relationship that's 20 years in the, you know, 20 years long. There's absolutely zero history of abuse. And then at the last, you know, at the, at the last moment, Either one or two things happen. Either one per one party is planning the divorce and sets the other person up to get the domestic abuse thing going, or you just say, oh, I left because it's been 20 years of abuse and I've been beaten and I've had all this stuff happen, right? So I think now the, the problem is, is that if it did change to that, what would happen is, is people, the narc would get more, would get smarter so that they would set the other person up. Now, the flip side to it is, um, well, let me back up. There was a state, I can't remember what state it was. It was in the Midwest that was actually talking about doing this, saying minus any outstanding proof, it's 50-50, no move, you know, no move aways. It's like, boom, it's done, right? Um, but the caveat was if there was uh, a, uh, you know, evidence, legitimate evidence of abuse, then obviously that wouldn't be the, ca uh, be the, be the case. Okay. YouTube uh, 
held Dave Nail's comment. So I just hit it and it just popped up on the strength on the screen. So um Shannon, hopefully that's that clarifies that because you know I don't want want to uh to um give a give a false impression on that. Um Okay, now I see it scrolled up again, so now I'm trying to to figure this out. Yeah, Galit says, I stopped uh, counting after, oh, stopped counting after 10K. Oh, man, I was thinking you stopped at 10K. Oh, and you had to change attorneys three times. Oh, my God, that's expensive. What the F? Have you ever heard of anything about narcs not being able to smell? I have never heard that. Um, I have a smelling problem, so if that's true... Oh my God, maybe I got to look myself in the mirror. Um, I have a messed up, I got deviated septum and all kinds of annoying stuff. But no, I haven't ever heard that. Uh, has anyone else heard that? Have you ever heard anything about narc not being able to smell? I have not heard that one before. That's interesting. Okay. Lorraine Sullivan says, agree, Dwayne, what wouldn't you pay to get it over and done with? Many just don't have the funds. Not easy to find good lawyers, though. Yeah, and see, that's the problem is a lot of people will just give up, you know? I mean, I think that's like, I mean, I think the stereotype of, well, not always. I mean, sometimes like the, 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 the dad that abandons everything um, is just, you know, a knucklehead. But I think a lot of times, other times, it's just that it's just you, you have to give up. You just, you know, it's like, how do you continue to fight whenever you've lost everything? I remember watching, uh, uh, I was watching that, that uh, documentary of uh, the Red Pill. And one of the people that the lady was interviewing, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but he, he was uh, tricked into, I mean, literally tricked into getting his wife pregnant. And then she fought him for what like eight to ten years and after a while and after i don't remember how much money he said it was some ungodly amount they can't smell reality that's pretty funny uh but uh yeah he gave up he was just like i can't i can't do it anymore i think it was like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars he'd spent um he wasn't getting anywhere and he just was like okay you know what i give up and he walked away and hasn't seen his and for the time of that filming hadn't seen his uh his son in like six seven eight years so i mean i i i mean i understand i understand how people just just give up i personally i think if you get to the point that I mean, if you're going to give up and move on with your life that's you know that's okay giving up to where you give up on life that's not okay Okay. Dansky says, Dwayne, attorneys are good until money gone. I drive around in my Uncle Buck mobile, all for being an active father, humble, broke, and happy. Hey, that's the key, though, man. That last part, if you can find happiness in the midst of this, it doesn't matter. So I was really lucky with my attorney because they would oftentimes give me advice and advise me against doing certain things because of the cost, which was really, uh, really cool. Oh no. So blue says that, uh, that her husband had a, has a deviated septum. Okay. So hopefully your husband is good and not bad. And we're not creating a trend here saying that people who have nose problems are narcs. Cause you know, Hey, I mean, they, they don't recognize it. Right. I guess I could be one. <laughs> I joke with that only because when I was going through the, uh, the awareness stage of this, I remember having that conversation when, when my therapist had said, you know, Hey, not diet can't diagnose her uh but you know a lot of it sounds like narcissistic personality disorder behavior i went looked it up and there are a lot of things i'm like oh my god i do some of these things and i went back to her and i'm like man uh, am i a narc and she was like look and she'd i mean she had been she had seen me for what maybe a year and a half maybe two years at that point and she said the fact that you're asking the question and you're worried about it, you're legitimately worried about it, you're not a narc, right? So, um, okay, ooh, I see no stuff. Let's see, what are we, what are, what's going on here? 
Yeah, I think the problem, okay, so getting back on the, uh, on the court thing, see, the thing that scares me about the whole, you know, if they, if they were able to, if, if the family law said, you know, we recognize cluster B personality disorder, and if somebody's a narc, we are going to just keep them away from the child, the children and give them to the other parent and stuff like that. My worry about that, excuse me, is these people are so good at spinning tails and and playing a game and putting on a facade and pushing your buttons that if you didn't know now for us that know that in the midst of this and know what we're dealing with okay we probably couldn't be tricked but take roll the clock back before you understood what narcissistic personality disorder was and maybe you were acting a little uh emotional if your ex could have pushed the buttons to make you act like you were emotionally out of control and then got the family court to say that you were that, then you could lose everything. And I, that, you know, I mean, a lot of that's happened in the past. I mean, it's kind of happened in the past where people have been able to play those stories about, you know, uh, false allegations and whatnot. Um, it just, it's, it's, it kind of scares me. It's one of those things where I think it needs to be recognized. Um, but at the same time, it's like, how do you do it and not get burned? Because it's so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very subjective. All right. Let me see where we are with the comments, but I do think, but okay. However, uh, Shannon, what I would say on this is that a lot of the things, a lot of the games that people play, uh, would stop, right? I mean, how many times have you, have you heard the story of a, of a guy who was a, who was the, the working father, not really the stay at home, wasn't the stay at home dad. Now he's trying to say that his ex mom is a nut job and shouldn't have custody and he wants full custody. Well, I mean, that's somebody who's just trying to manipulate the system too, right? I mean, it, it's like, so a lot of it would, I mean, I'm thinking if you could get to a point where you file it and it's like, okay, dumbass, sorry, knucklehead, you know, you, you think that uh, the other person shouldn't have whatever, boom, right off the bat, it's 50, 50 and you want to prove it, then you have to pay for it. Um, and typically probably what would happen is because these people like chaos, if there was no way to control the chaos, then they probably would try to push the kids on you. Well, I don't have time for the kids. You know, she needs to have the kid, you know, right. I mean, it's like, because then it would be, it's, it's, it's a look for that battle. They look for, for that conflict. All right. Ugh. Man, I might, I might only be able to do two hours tonight cause I'm my my back's been feeling better, but it's like, it's just, maybe it's cause I'm hunched over and leaning. Maybe, maybe I'm just doing this wrong. Maybe I need to, re, maybe I need to re readjust myself or something. Lorraine Sullivan says judges and therapists are poorly trained to recognize these personality types. That's exactly the reason why I'm worried about it. Kay Lilly says never understood why my ex would never answer my question while I was distraught. He just looked at me. Did he look at you with a narcissistic stare? Probably he was like happy that he was able to push your buttons and get you distraught. I used to shut down when my ex would, uh, would poke me on stuff. Um, I remember my mom just, Oh my God, my mom was fast. She, if there was an argument and you tried to argue anything you said would be pulled and whacked upside your head. So I learned early on growing up, shut up. Just don't, you know, if there's an argument going on, just keep your mouth shut and, uh, because you can't win. And that's, I mean, that's kind of what happened with my ex. When she would start going off on me, I would just, I would, you know, which then creates more problems. You know, you don't talk, you know, you know, I mean, just, it was, there's no winning. There's no winning with these people. No matter what you do, it's the wrong thing. Um, except however, I have known a lot of people whose exes, whenever they are pushing their buttons, whenever the, their partner explodes, then it calms everything down. It's like, Oh, Hey, great one. You know, that was funny. That was a great comeback. You know I mean? It's like, seriously, because they love that, that reaction. <laughs> Cindy says, I love how you apologize when you swear, say it loud and proud. This is a great show. Uh, this is a grown up show and we've been silenced for, for so long. Yeah. You know what? I, I just, I've made a, uh, uh, from the beginning of this, I have made a, a decision to not do that. So that's why I try not to do it. And I'm really disappointed, disappointed in myself whenever I do it. There's a lot of other channels that, that, that's, that, that do that. That's not who I want to be. And that's not the way I want to communicate, which is actually kind of funny 
um, because I do have a tendency to have a potty mouth and that was one of the things that used to drive my ex crazy. But thanks for the support, I really appreciate that. Okay, so let me uh, look where we are. What the F said, my ex narc said she never dreamed and couldn't smell anything. Several times I've heard, I've heard that they don't dream, but I haven't heard anything about not being able to smell. Just wondering if it's related or not. No, I don't know. I do dream. You know, that's an interesting one. Cause I don't know if I ever remember my ex talking about dream. That's, that is an interesting comment. I have never heard that one. So I'm curious, is, um, does anyone else have that experience where their exes, their uh, suspected narcissistic ex didn't uh, uh, didn't dream. That's interesting. I used to have nightmares a lot. Don't have those much anymore, which is really cool. But I have been dreaming some pretty crazy stuff. Bear says, Dwayne, you should lean back and bring the mic and computer to you rather than lean forward. Nurse thinking. That's true. That would change my whole focus because as I lean back, it gets out of focus and I don't have it set up for autofocus. So, um, but thank you for that. That's probably not a bad idea. Sit differently. <laughs> Lorraine says you're, you're getting older, Dwayne, take it easy. I know it's frustrating. I was having a conversation about that with uh, Debbie the other day. Um, she's because of her new job, she's driving a lot, not because of the job, but on the weekends, she's driving back down here to, to hang out every other week. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it wipes her out when she, when she takes the drive. We were talking about the fact that we just, you know, we're, we're not, we're not in our twenties anymore. We can't do some of the things we used to do. And it's hard to, to realize the, uh, the limitations that you actually, you know, that your body puts on you. Elizabeth says, oh, my ex would talk while asleep. Anyone else? That I don't remember. I don't, that one I didn't have. Angela Fossella says, pa uh, patients diagnosed with psychosis, NOS, after NARC family made them psychotic and then bring them to the uh, psychic ER. I listen to my patients, not family. See, and that's the thing. People can get pushed. See, that's, and actually that's a really good example because I know that's happened, right? I mean, pe people can mess with someone's mind enough to where they think they're going crazy and they lose sight of what's really happening. That's what, that's what scares me about some of this stuff, you know? I mean, um, that's why I think it'd be better if it was just like, if it was set up to where it just stops. And, you know, it's not, the, I mean, see, the default position in family court is a battle. You know, I mean, if, if nobody is forced to agree with anything and if somebody, especially because at the beginning, there's no established order. So all someone has to do is take the kids. And I mean, we have, we have uh, a couple of people who are dealing with that where they're, they don't have custody arrangements. Their exes, the fathers have convinced the kids to, or at least one of the kids to, to move in with them. And it's all a ploy, in my opinion, to where when they go to court, it's like, oh, well, you know, uh, Jackie is, is living with me. She's been living with me and is enrolled in school and all this other stuff. And then you're sitting there trying to fight uh, to undo it. It's, it's, you know, I mean, if, if that didn't work, I mean, if it was, if someone did that, and it was like, nope, sorry, boom, put them back. You know, no, it's not like this. It's, it's. 50 50 and this is where you're going to be and this is what they're going to do then some of those those things wouldn't happen i mean like i know my ex was trying to leave the state to force a custody change that was her goal it's like well if i leave i'm going to get all the money i'm going to get all the custody and you know i will win and it was a, it was a trump card and now fortunately whenever she realized that that wasn't going to work uh she decided to stay and you know lives now a mile away from me which I will be glad whenever that is no longer the case, but it's still going to be a while. Oh, Angela says, I did not take the word of family over my patients. Most of the time, the patients couldn't express it because of the emotional damage. It was suspicious and we called social services. Yeah, it's like, a, it's, I, 
Yeah, I mean, at least you had, at least they had somebody looking out for them, right? I mean, somebody who's being lazy on it and just believes what people are saying. I mean, I pity the person who's being targeted by that. I mean, guys, it's one thing when you're being targeted and, you know, you're losing a little bit of custody and you're losing half your, half your stuff. But if you can make it through it to where you don't lose your freedom or your job, your profession, um, and you're not like living in the street, then, I mean, it's still hard. I mean, that's not, I'm not saying that it's not easy, but, uh, you know, there are some people who really get played on this and it work goes, it works out really badly. Jenny Wren says, my ex used to pretend to be, I have no idea what that is and swing his arms across me and hit me, uh, when he wasn't sleeping on the couch. Oh, dreaming. Maybe that's what you said. Dreaming and swing his arm across me and hit me when he wasn't sleeping on the couch watching porn. Well, there you go. At least he had a, at least he had a hobby that he was dedicated to. Or he would just raise his knees into my back. Great days. Wow. Yeah. But see, that's, that's, and, and again, that you do that. And then whenever you say, Hey, you hit me. Oh, I was just dreaming. Oh, I'm sorry. Or maybe not even say, I'm sorry. Pro probably he didn't apologize. Probably it was like, I was just dreaming. You know, come on, get over it. Right. That's probably the more typical response. I always think about the, you know, that you would try to apologize. Maybe, a, yeah. I don't think, I, I know for me, my, um, my ex never apologized for anything. Um, so yeah, Jenny, I'm surprised, I, not surprised. I would, uh, I would be curious if I was right about, um, yeah, sorry, never. Okay. So whenever you said something, Jenny, whenever you said, Hey, you, you just nailed me in the back. You just stuck your knee in my back and probably he got defensive and probably had like a little narc rage about, you know, how dare you even extenuate that he's, you know, doing it on purpose. And the problem is, as then you start wondering, well, am I being, you know, am I being overdramatic? I, Nar just says, I, I am sorry is not in their vocabulary, Dwayne. Yeah, absolutely. It's not. You know, I, it was weird because I went through a phase where, um, and I, and I guess maybe I apologize a lot, you know, that good old people pleaser syndrome, but, uh, uh, you know, there was a period of time where I absolutely wouldn't say that. And I was just waiting to see if she would ever say it. She never did. She never will. So Cindy Tao says, Dwayne, I'm totally suffering academically with all of this. My professors have been so accommodating, but between dealing with my kids, uh, narc like behavior and him still living in the house, it's tough. Oh, I forgot he's living in the house. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't know how you're doing it, Cindy. That's, uh, that's insane. Um, I, you know, whenever I realized that, uh, I was living an illusion before I even knew what, uh, narc abuse was. I couldn't do it anymore. I had to get out of the house. I just couldn't do it. Kay Lily says, that's cool, Nargis. I'm much better too. Been on the, uh, this latest road for over two years. Can't stand it. I want to move on. Uh, Bluebell says to Christy, um, I'm, I'm free so far. I worry about what he's going to do next via the court. Yeah, and just, I, I'm, you know what, Blue? I made some videos about that. Um, you know, the fear tactics they use. Sorry, I got a knot in my back. Um, and, uh, you might want to check those out because it could be helpful. But bottom line is, is just, you know, expect them to do shenanigans, but try not to react, you know, try to keep, you know, for the most part, especially in family court. I mean, everyone kind of thinks in the family court thinks that everyone's lying. So a lot of times they don't, they don't, I mean, as long as you're not trying to say that you, you know, that you deserve full custody and the other person should never see the other, you know, see the kids. That's a tough one. And um, I think that would be really hard to pull off. Uh, but as long as, you know, they're not trying to, to do something completely crazy. As long as they're, or if they're trying to do something completely crazy, the likelihood that the court is going to say, you know, agree with it is not, is not, you know, I don't think it's that, uh, uh, realistic. Now, if you're trying to do a move away or they're playing some type of game to where it would force some type of custody change, then well, maybe. Good night. Dan Gans taking off says night to the good people of this world. Stay positive and stay strong. Good night, Dan. Hopefully you have a good night. All right. So I think I am going to take a quick break and uh, I'll be right back. So I'm going to fill up my, my drink. So, um, uh, so don't go anywhere and I'll be right back and then we can jump on to the next part of the conversation.
All right. Okay, sorry about that, guys. So Kay Lily's jumping off, so good night. So signing off too. Good night, everyone. Have a nice week. So thanks for jumping on, Karen. Hopefully you have a great evening. All right. Let's see, where are we at? We have 35 people on. So uh, we talked a lot about, or in the first half of this, or the first part, we talked about, uh, you know, will this end? So I think we've talk that topic if anyone else wants to get in or talk more about that let me know if anything else anyone wants to hit that will be would be fine I do want to say that the thanksgiving live stream was a, a lot larger than i anticipated i really thought that was only going to be a quick hour with maybe you know 10 people or so and that was a pretty big uh, that was a pretty big show so appreciate everyone who was who was there for that John Iver, uh, Iverson is on. Welcome, John. Glad you could jump in. Um, I don't think I've seen a co you in the comments before, so welcome to the channel and welcome to the live stream. Chrissy Lee says, self-care is my goal, and now I'm making it minute by minute. You know, Christy, I remember, I remember being at that point uh, where it was. I felt like I was just trying to, I was just doing it moment by moment, and uh you know, that, that's a tough, that's a tough place to be in. Uh, I, I'm glad you're focusing on self-care because those minutes will get longer. I remember in the beginning stages of, um, uh, of this for me, it seemed like, you know, I might have a good moment and then the rest of the day was a nightmare. And then it's like, it shifted, right? Well, I'm going to try, I don't know how I could try to visualize this, but you know, it's like I had you know, this was like the good and the whole part over here was, was a nightmare. And as it progressed, it just got more and more. Those moments got longer and longer. First, they were moments, then they were hours, then they were a few hours, then they were half a day and a few days. Um, and it just keeps, you just keep building and building and building. So, uh, Christy, you'll, you'll get there. <laughs> Bluebell says, uh, I thank you for the uh, Thanksgiving live stream. I live stream. I have no life anymore. So it was a real treat for me. See that? <laughs> that? That's actually what I was thinking. I was, you know, I was looking at it going, man, you know, for the folks who don't really have anything going on that it would be, uh, it would be helpful. And, and, uh, I'm glad it worked out. I, uh, uh, I mean, it was fortunate that I didn't have my kids. So I had the, the ability to, uh, to do that, and I'm and I'm glad you guys appreciated it. So I was I was really surprised. Uh, and the support was great, and it went. Uh, it was three hours. I mean, it was it went it went pretty long. So, what the f is off to? Says Elizabeth Dwayne. Everybody, thank you and good night. Good night. What the f? So, uh, thanks for jumping on. Okay, so before we get all this, let me let me do go through my normal stuff before we start losing everybody. And the first thing on that is, if you haven't gone over to the Dad Surviving Divorce website, uh, you can do that by going to dadsurvivingdivorce.com. And if you when you first log in, this little thing will pop up as an annoying little little banner. But if not, you can fill, fill this out and sign up for the newsletter where I send out different information on what's going on. You also have the opportunity to send me a voice email recording right through the website. Um, not, no, I've had a few people do it. Not too many. Um, the other, if you want to support the channel, you can do that through the donate tab and it will drop you right over to the PayPal little thingy. Uh, some people have been doing that lately. I won't call anybody out on that. It's private and uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to send me an email, you can do that through the email tab here, or you can do the contact tab there, which will pull up a web form. I'm not going to click on it because every time I do it drive slow, it reloads slow. And if you're looking for resources, I created this tab to, oh, see, there you go. That was the box that I was telling you about. That would be annoying. That would pop up. And, uh, there's a couple of books I put in there 
that uh, I think that were helpful to me, that it might be helpful to you to include some hypnosis files from Hypnosis Download uh, and a company called Uncommon Knowledge. They are also based out, or not also, they are based out of the UK. So if you do enjoy that British accent, like I actually do, it is cool because whenever they're doing the hypnosis files, they're talking in British, you know, um, they're British. So that's interesting. And uh, here's the mean workbook that I did with Paul Caloni, which I need to get him on the channel one of these days. We're still trying to coordinate that to uh, for me to do an interview with him. So that is the resources and all the stuff off the website. If you sign up for a uh, notification or not notification, if you subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't, uh, I would appreciate you do it. And if you do subscribe, then right over here, it'll pop up and do stars and all kinds of stuff. If you're a new, if you're a new person, it's just something I figured out how to do. It was kind of cool. So it was one of those neat little things. Anyways, uh, if you subscribe to your favorite YouTuber, are you subscribed to me? If you don't hit the bell notification, YouTube will not tell you, will randomly tell you about their videos. It's really annoying. I don't know why they do that, but you can subscribe and subscribing is not bad because if you want to just periodically look at somebody, you can go into your feed and find them real easy. But if you're expecting that a subscription is going to notify you every time your the, the person you subscribe to posts a video, it doesn't work that way. You have to hit the bell notification. If you do that, then it will. That's really critical for getting notifications of live streams uh, on top of regular videos. If there's anything live that's time critical, um, you know, like, like if you want to know when Angie's going live in the morning every day, even though she does it at the same time, you know, signing up for that would actually pop it up. Um, anyway, so that's my, my normal stuff. Let me get back over to the comments and see where we are. Okay. Uh, Lorraine, uh, Lorraine Sullivan says dementia would be a blessing at times, man. Yeah, I, I, I hear you just because it would be, you know, just to not have to have the reality of what you're dealing with. That would be, it, it's frustrating. But you know what, though? I would personally rather know and have an opportunity to have a life outside of this instead of being trapped in it forever. At least that's that's my thought on it. Um, Bear says, absolutely, Joseph. Same here with my life. He consumed me. I think I missed what Joseph said. Oh, you no, know, you said, no, my life was her life. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think most of us can relate to that because that's I can definitely relate to that. You know, I tried to, everything she wanted to do, I tried to do, um, and it's just, it's amazing. You know, you try everything to try to really connect with the person. And it's just, it's, there's nothing you can do, guys. I mean, so that's the thing. I mean, don't beat your, and I don't know, I don't I mean, I don't know if anyone said this, but I'll just say this just in the off chance that some, somebody's struggling with this. There's nothing you could have done. There's nothing you could have said. Nothing was going to work. You know, they can turn around and try to make you feel bad that you, you know, you didn't try hard enough. You didn't, you didn't open up enough. You didn't do, you know, this, that, or the other thing. Bottom line is nothing would have worked. Everything you would have done, there would have been something else wrong. And it's really tough because I know for me, there was a phase I went through where I really thought that, well, what if I have done something different? What if I would have tried something? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They, they live in that, their, their chaos and all it would, all it would happen is, is they would come up with something different. You, you try to do everything they want to do. It's not good enough. You don't do everything that they want to do. It's not good enough. You want to go hang out, you know, deal with your friends. You're not there. If you're, I mean, it's just like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever you do, isn't going to hit the mark. Uh, Bears cat says, thanks to I don't think we hear that enough. Well, thanks bears. I appreciate it. Jenny says, agree. Dave nail is saying night all good night, Dave. Thanks for jumping on. Good seeing you. John Iverson says they keep moving the goalpost. Absolutely, John. That is absolutely the case. Bluebell says, as much as I'm in pain and wondering what might happen to me next, my greatest fear is for my children. They are being severely alienated, even to the point of psychosis. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, all you can do, I mean, I'm starting to make some more videos dealing specifically with that. And the, in my opinion, the best way to, to do that is one is you you have to make you have to understand what your ex is trying to get you is how they're trying to play you right they know how you're going to act so what they're doing is is they're pushing the buttons uh bb's gone so uh good night bb um or maybe you're not gone 
maybe you're okay. Sorry. I saw it pop up my, my apologies on that. But anyway, so they, they start pushing the buttons with your kids with the expectation that you are going to react a certain way. And the problem is, is if they're manipulating, if they're doing the marionette thing with your kids, I don't know why I'm doing Well, you know, like the, the marionette, right. And then you respond a certain way. Then your kids are thinking, you know, Oh, daddy's right. Or mommy's right. You know, that's how the other, you know, that's how my other parent acts and, and, the, and they just proved it and they start believing it. And then it makes it worse, right? Cause it compounds because then things start getting worse and you start getting alienated more. And then you start responding the wrong way more and just creating more and more problems. Uh, it, it guys, it is really, yeah. Okay. Dave was saying, he was saying, uh, or BB was saying, he was saying, sorry, uh, good night to Dave. So that's why I got confused on that. So Shannon O'Brien says, oh, that's moving goalposts. So unfair, but that's how it is. Yeah. But the thing is, is that if you can, if you can recognize that they're doing that, if you can see that they're doing it and you can anticipate it, you can cut them off at the pass. And actually what happens if you're able to do that and you're able to do it effectively at blow back, it blows back on the other parent because then it starts exposing them um, for what they're doing. It's tough because they, they live in that, 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 that crazy, uh, that crazy environment your ex does. Uh, so they're able to just, you know, bounce and weave, which is really frustrating. And what I mean is, is I don't necessarily expect that, you know, you're going to do the modification on your side and that, you know, the ex is going to just crumble and go, Oh my God, I've been, I've been caught, you know, I've lost. No, they're going to lie and continue to cheat and continue to manipulate because that's what they do. Bluebell says, yeah, I understand my case is pretty extreme. Well, uh, I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I hate it when I, when I hear your guys' stories where the system, well, the system isn't helping you and then they're able to, to, to alienate the kids against you. And I mean, and Blue, I, I'd also look at that book I was showing on the resources page. You know, let me jump back over to that. On the resources page, this book, I didn't, because I didn't really talk about it that much. The, whoa, the divorce poison, divorce poison. That's a really great book. It talks a lot about this. And then you can also do the, um, let me, uh, let me see if I can pull up. Um, whoops, I spelt it wrong. Ah. Let's see if I can find it. Um, I'm trying to find the Childress one and I can't. Hmm. Well, that didn't work. I was going to try to find the book about the one main book about parental alienation and I cannot, I can't find it. Anyways, uh, I, what I would have, basically my point is, okay. So you've already watched the Warshack video. Yeah. Just, just learn, you know, get as much information as you can. Cause they do have some good to Oh, okay. And ch that's who I was looking for. That's the one I was trying to find was a Dr. Childress one. Um, unless, I mean, let me try to. Uh, let's, let me just do a search on here. Why is it not coming up? Well, I'm not sure if this is the book I'm thinking about, but uh, anyways, bottom line is, let me get out of this. So I don't, I don't know if that's, if that's the one is, you know, try to find as, as many techniques as you can to try to break through to your kids. But if, I think in the simplest terms, it's, it's trying to make sure that you're not doing those things that the ex is trying to target you to do, that you, that you're able to play good cop, bad cop, and, uh, you know, really build that relationship and that connection with your kids, validate their issues. Even, even if they're angry at you to be able to take a breath, let them vent be able to express their concern and not get angry. And I, I struggled with that. I mean, I caused a lot of my own problems with my kids because of that. And, uh, um, 
I think that's, I mean, at least that was in my situation. That was how I made the, the best strides forward. And, you know, my ex was doing a lot to try to really push that, uh, that, that agenda of, um, you know, the estranged relationship, especially with my oldest, uh, when he first went into therapy, that was kind of the main thing is that he had an estranged relationship with his biological father. And I, you know, I fought it, right? I mean, I went, I talked with the therapist and said, look, okay, you know, if that's the case, then isn't your job to help us, help me have a better, or help he and I to have a better relationship? Yeah. Okay. Well, how do we do that? Here's the name for my therapist. You know, what do I have to sign so that you can talk to her so that you can help her fix, you know, my problems? Because, you know, I want a better relationship with my child. Now, I told him, I said, you know, some of the things that you're saying, he doesn't do at my house. So how is it that someone can be this way, but they don't act that way at my house? It took time. It took time for them to, to see through that there was an agenda um, and uh, change it. I'm not change it, but to, uh, you know, start breaking down what, um, uh, what the ex was trying to, to do. And I know what she was doing. It was obvious. She was trying to get someone else to, to validate the problem that my son was having with me to make it to, to the point to convince him that he didn't want to be around me and to be somebody else to validate saying that it would be in the best interest of the kids to just live with her full time and not, and only see me every once in a while. So, all right, let me check to see where we are on the, Oh, I'm in the chat. I'm trying to move off of it. That was silly. Angela Fossella says, good night, all, all the love and validation to you all. Thank you, Dwayne, and all the sweet dreams next time. Well, have a good evening, Angela. I know it's late where you are because you're on the East Coast. Uh, so appreciate you jumping on. Narja says, blue, uh, blue bells. That was my question to Dwayne. How do I not get triggered when I see my son's behavior copy to the, the T of his dad's past behavior. I get so mad at him. I don't know how to re, uh, reach, how to reach, react, sorry, how to react to him. That's a really great question, Nargis. Actually, you know what? That's so great. I'm going to pull that up and put it on a slide. At least I'm going to try to. Okay. We'll go back here. All right, Nargis has said, uh, how do I not get triggered when I see my son's behavior copy to the T of his dad's past behavior? I get so mad at him, I don't know how to react to him. Okay, so this is the thing. You need to control that PTSD response, which is really tough. And part of that, what you, what you do on that is you recognize that your kid is mimicking what he's used to. So it doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be the same thing and use that as an opportunity not to bash the father, but to talk to him about the behavior. So I, you know, and let me, let me, uh, let's see if I can scroll over here and see if you mentioned, uh, with some, some extra details. Okay. Um, so what I would say on that, and I actually did this with my daughter, is she did something where she was invalid. Her, her, actually, it was really weird because it was the first time that both of my kids have done something here at the house that kind of related to, to their mom. And uh, I may have told this story before, but to try to quickly go through it. Basically, it was a conversation where um, my girls are really into art. They like to draw. My son likes to write. And the conversation that I wasn't a part of the conversation, I was just overhearing it, where the, uh, the ex was talking to the youngest and said, you know, hey, what did you want to do? You know, did you still want to do art whenever you grow up? Be an artist. And she replied back saying, no, um, no, I'm, oh, I'm going to write. And the ex said, well, that's not, you know, that's not art. And my son took offense to it. And he basically got a narcissistic rage as a result of that. Now the argument that my daughter, cause so that's the backstory. The story of my house is my daughter and my, my son, my middle daughter and my son were having an argument about that. And 
the ex, uh, not the ex, my, my middle daughter was defending her mom. Oh, well, you know, just making excuse, making excuse, making excuses. And I'm like, look, let's back up for a second. And, you know, you're not, va- I'm okay, you're not even listening to what your brother is saying. I said, this has nothing, not even talking about your mom. Just take this scenario. Your brother said he felt a certain way about this conversation. You're not even acknowledging or taking a moment to even validate that feeling. You're saying that's an illegitimate feeling and you shouldn't have felt that way because the person never meant that way, which I used to do this to, you know, make excuses. And I'm sure we all did, but you know, because that's not what they really meant, you're taking it out of context. You're taking it out of, out of offense. And I'm like, look, how would you feel if I did something, I said, you know, you, you got to look at it with the, with what the right response is. I said, so, so just with what you're doing, I mean, you're not even taking an opportunity or a moment to even listen to your brother to, to, to decide or to try to hear what he's coming from or even have empathy for what it, what he's dealing with. I said, the problem is, is that if you did that, if we had that, and that's what I said to her, I said, if we had that conversation if you said something or I was talking to your sister or your brother and I said something to them to try to make a point and you came to me and said, Hey, you just, that, that, that's not right. You know, you hurt my feelings. I said, I would say, Oh my God, I'm sorry. That's not what I meant. It's out of context. You know, I mean, no, you're, you know, I mean that I would validate their, her concern too. And I, and, and, and that's okay. So that's what I did is I, I was able to take that particular situation. And I don't know if I'm really making a great example of this, but what I'm trying to say, when they do, when your kids do something like that, that's triggering, try to talk to them about it. Not in a, you know, you're just like your dad or you're just like this or whatever in a reasonable conversation and say, Hey, is that, you, do you really think that's the best way to do that? You know, I mean, Let's sit down and talk about this for a moment. You know, you're, you're responding in a, uh, st- well, I've had this with my, my middle daughter as well, because she went through this phase about being, my, my ex is really, really stubborn, right? And my daughter was going through this phase where it's like, I'm stubborn, like a badge of honor. And I'm like, um, honey, do you, I mean, being stubborn's not necessarily a good thing. You know, I mean, yeah, there are some times where you're being stubborn to where you're protecting your boundaries is one thing, but, but being stubborn and then maintaining that d- damn the consequences isn't right. So what I'm saying is, is see if you can take those situations, recognize that they're not necessarily, you know, dipped in the demon pool of your ex and see if you can use those instances to try to communicate with them, to explain to them or get them to, to see the potential that maybe there's a different way to do things, right? Um, and I've been babbling on, so I have no idea if you guys, if that even makes any sense to you guys on this, or if you think I've completely lost my mind, I would definitely love to hear what you have to, th- what you think. And let me look at some of the comments to see, see where we're at with that. But that's, that's kind of my take on that, and I don't know if that helps. Um, okay, that was Nargis that said this. So you have to let me know, Nargis, what you think, how, what's your opinion of that? Um, Jenny Wren says that, uh, Nargis, my child even copies X mad laugh, which was a copy of his narc mother. Oh God. You know, my kids used to do this thing. I'm working on it. And I, my ex used to say that all the time. They, I actually broke them where they don't say that anymore. You know, it's like, Hey, can you go clean your worm? I'm, I'm working on it. You know, whatever. I, I don't even, I don't even say that phrase. I think I said it came up the other day and one of them laughed because of it. Okay. So I'm just going through the comments, trying to see if I, what I missed. BB says subconsciously, I seem to react properly and things come off better, better. Yeah. That's, you know, that's the hard part is whenever, if you instinct instinctively respond or act a certain way, then it makes it easier. Uh, if not, then you really have to work on yourself and you have to slow yourself down recognize whenever you're getting triggered, recognize whenever you're starting to, to, um, to respond in a way you don't really want to respond and try to stop yourself. So yeah. Oh, well, which is okay. That's the next comment. Barry said, I have to learn to take a uh, pause and not react. And that's just what I was saying. And that's exactly the case, you know, and it's tough. I mean, guys, and, and, and I struggled with this too. There are times where I didn't react right. I said the wrong thing. I got angry. You know, I mean, I, I pushed things, you know, it, 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 it was a, 
it was one of those things where I, I, I made the bad decisions. I paid the consequences for it and I had to try something different and I had success with those. So that's what I'm, you know, so, so if you're struggling with this, it's hard. This isn't easy. This is not the easiest thing in the world to do. So, um, anyway, so let me look and see where we are. Uh, Pin Rose is on. Welcome. I think I missed you when you came on before, but welcome to the channel, I think. And welcome to the live stream. Uh, says, hi, if she wants a divorce, give it and celebrate. No woman is worth sacrificing your happiness for too many fish out there. Um, I would agree. Uh, I would say no person is worth sacrificing your happiness for because it goes both ways. If you're in a toxic environment or toxic relationship with somebody, even if they're not a narcissist, if they're toxic to you, then it's, it's toxic and it's not a healthy relationship to be in. And you can't make somebody change. You can't make them be the way you want to be. Yeah, I think I said that right. Okay. Oh, John Iverson says, increase the time between stimulus and response. I count to three sometimes with my kids. Yeah, that's a really great idea. Or even walk out of the room and do something different. You have to give yourself that time. That's really critical because when you respond emotionally and you don't think it through, the co there are consequences and it can actually make things worse and slow down the progress that you're trying to, trying to make. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, Nargis has said, Dwayne, he's 30 years old and rebels back when I am patient with him. It gets me, it gets to me. So I told him that until I don't see a change in his behavior, I'm going to not talk to him. Uh, you know, I end up crying that night. You know, the thing is though, I mean, you, it's still about boundaries, Nargis. I mean, if, if, um, I mean, if he's 30 years old and he's playing those games, then there's a possibility that he's doing that just to try to get the reaction from you, which it would be a very narcissistic move. Uh, it's a, it's tougher, you know, um, and, but I mean, and you did what you needed to do. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's tough, you know? And I mean, I, my kids are still young, so I'm still hopeful. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that, that the things I've used, that I've tried is, is going to help. I have seen some, uh, some, um, uh, some positive improvements on all of my kids, but, uh, ultimately time is going to tell, right? Elizabeth says, yes, respond, don't react. Try assertiveness, uh, give them a task to do. Cindy just, and I just scrolled up. Dang it. Mm -mm. Cindy says, do you have any videos on that or could you make one or several on this, please? And thanks. Yeah, actually, I think I have been making some of this on, on, on this particular topic um, lately. A lot of my last, probably in the last couple of weeks has been a lot of this. Um, Actually, I need to make a playlist that pulls the stuff together for the kids. You know, it's really weird, but it's like every time I do a video on the on my kids or on dealing with kids, it's like it it's doesn't get as much traction. It's like the views are down and uh, um, stuff. So that's kind of interesting. Um, seeing news alerts. Don't don't watch the news. It's depressing. Penrose says, we only have this life to live and we will never exist again. Don't waste it on someone who doesn't make you happy. Yeah, that's true. I agree with you. It's tough though. I mean, a lot of us uh, burn a lot of time. I mean, for me, it was uh, tw 21 years. Seven ways. Oh, Chris, I'm seeing if I can find that video you're talking about, Christy. I think I, <laughs> you might be talking about the seven ways to calm a panic attack. It's an older video. I kind of did it in more of a, uh, a, a slower tone to try to calm you down. Um, I'm not sure if that's the video you were talking about, but if you were, there it is. Again, remember, it, it, I know somebody else, or Shannon, I think, was having problems with it. But if you go to the channel, you should be able to search on the videos to try to call it down so you don't have to go through all of them. Because if you try to go through all of them, I mean, I have way too many. 
well, not that I have way too many. It's just, I mean, what do I have now? Like 300 or something, 350 or 20 or something like that. I don't remember. Okay. So let me go back over here. Sorry about that. I'm glad you liked that video, Christy. Actually, at one point I was going to try to pull that audio out and just make it available as a download. Um, Somebody else had asked about if I could start making some of the videos, uh, podcasts. I actually want to start making podcasts, but um, it's it's tough. I because I know some people don't have the ability. You know, it's like they 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 need to be able to download the files. So if you have YouTube Red, you can download videos. It doesn't work that well. Um, also, the other thing you can use is, uh, I mean, I use a, a utility called Clip Grab sometimes to grab clips. Um, to to down to watch them offline or pull the audio out. So, okay, let's see where we are. BB says to Cindy, I ask him if that's uh, if that's proper and if he thinks that's responsible. Depending on his reaction, I press on and give him a choice. He can choose to make the choice to control himself or be separate uh, from the family and lie down in his room until he can control himself. It is okay to be upset, but not to lash out like that. I've had to do the same thing, BB. I've done that with my daughter because she has a tendency. I, it, it, oh my God, this was a tough one. My middle daughter would come out and do things like come out for dinner and pout and, 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 you know, trying to get a reaction and, if I responded, then it would turn into an argument. And then for a while there, I stopped doing it. And then like his, her sister would, would say, wow, I almost said her name, dang it, would say, uh, you know, hey, you know, what's wrong? And then she would start yelling at her. And after a while of, of sending her to a room and then basically saying, look, you know, if you're in a bad mood and you don't want to come out, you can stay in your room. But this isn't an appropriate way to, to deal with it. I mean, I, so again, I used, was able to use it as, actually, I forgot about that. I was age, uh, able to use it as a, as a teaching moment, and I have had success where that behavior doesn't happen as much. Uh, I mean, it still happens from time to time, but for the most part, it doesn't. So that, thanks, BB, for bringing that back up. That was a good one. I should make a note of that because I, I haven't made a video on that, and I really should. All right. Uh, Cindy Tout says uh, to BB, I agree. Try that too, but I swear I get drained doing going through this every other day. But he continues and mocks me instead. And Cindy, the problem is, is that see, this is where I talk about the fact that you have to have that thick skin to where you know you're getting poked in the eye and just persevere through it. And it is tough. It is really tough. And in, in the beginning stages, when you're not seeing any success. It's even harder because you feel like you're just, you know, you're being put through the through a meat grinder. Uh, Sue K says, and I can totally relate to you. I sacrificed my whole life to protect the kids from their narc dad, but young adult's daughter has so many narc traits. Yeah, I mean, you can only do what you guys can, you know, you can only do what you can do, and but it's really tough when you've done everything and you've tried to sacrifice, and you don't. Um, and it doesn't work out the way you would hope, it's really frustrating. I mean, I've struggled with that myself. I've finally gotten to the point now where if they ultimately decide to make a different decision, then I've, I feel that I've tried everything in my power to try to do the right thing. And if they pick a different direction, then that's, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's their path. Maybe that's the lessons they have to learn and they weren't supposed to learn easy, right? Um, I mean, geez, it, I, I'm 47 years old. It took me, you know, until I was what in my, what, 45 to really start to understand this. I mean, it took me a long time. It took me a long time to learn my lessons, you know? So, I mean, my hope is that my kids don't have to go through the same thing. And, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, you can only do what you can do. All right. Chrissy Lee says, so Cindy, my narc ex loves to call me crazy, jealous, bitter. I am none of those things, but every email says that. I can't wait to get to the point that I no longer care. Oh, you'll get there, Christy. You will. Um, and uh, part of that is the hybrid no contact. Oh, where you say, okay, Dwayne, in hybrid no contact, I will print the email and cross out all the hate speech. That's a really good idea. I like that. I leave only the info for co-parenting. That is an excellent idea. Uh, I, I didn't do it that way, but that is a really good, you know what? That's a good way to do it, right? Because then it's, it's probably also therapeutic because you're like, okay, this is inappropriate. This is inappropriate. You know, okay. So it's like a redacted, 
you know, like the JFK files where everything's redacted except for, you know, one word. And it's like, you know, what time do they go to school? Oh, okay, so it's a full email saying I'm a piece of crap. I'm a horrible person. I'm bitter. I'm angry. I don't care about the kids. I blah, 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 blah. Oh, there's one question. Okay, that's something I need to answer. And you answer it or you say you already know it. You know, ignore it. So, but I like that. I like that idea of crossing it out. I'll have to remember that the next time I, I make an, a hybrid no contact video because that is a really good technique. I like that. Thanks, Christy. Yeah, <laughs> Christy, yeah, Dwayne, redacted version. Absolutely. Nargis uh, says, Dwayne, you are 47, I am 51, my son is 30. When will he learn to accept we parents, especially mama here, is advi advising words of wisdom and will make a successful future for him? Nargis, sometimes, you know, it, it's... It, sometimes... That's just, this is the world that they have to go through. You know, you can only do, I mean, you can't make the decision for them. You know, Nargis, it sounds like you've done everything you, okay, let me, let me back up uh, and use it with my story. You know, with everything that I, I did and tried to do with my son, when he turned 18, I was mentally preparing myself for him to just, you know, whatever he decided to do. If he decided he wanted to live with mommy, fine. If he wanted to live with me, fine. I, to be perfectly honest, I didn't expect that he was going to want to continue to transition. That actually surprised me. But, you know, I mean, I just, it's like, okay, you know, I'm, I, I try to be available to where he, you know, I can try to talk to him and give him those, you know, uh, advising words, like you say, of wisdom uh, to try to help him. But at the end of the day, you know, he is going to have to make his own decisions. You know, I would feel worse, and I'm sure you would feel worse if you didn't do any. You know, you didn't give them that the 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 mentoring or that knowledge, and you um, you know, and then he was making bad decisions. You know, I mean, just because you lead someone to water doesn't mean they're going to drink, right? I mean, you can. I mean, it's like if 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 one of you. Okay, another flip side to this: if one of you asked me for advice and you said, Dwayne, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What do you think I should do? And if you asked me that, and I would give you my, my opinion, I would say, okay, with all the information, this is what I would recommend. But at the end, it's still your decision, right? I mean, you take the information, you take all the information, and you make the best decision that's, that's right for you. And if that decision isn't what I would advise, that's, it's your decision, right? You know, I'm not going to hate you for it, just like I'm not going to hate my kids for it, Um it, but maybe that's just a different way I'm wired. That's kind of the way I used to look whenever at, at my job, you know, my job was to, or is, or was, or still is kind of to advise, you know, my boss on my opinion on things. If they choose to follow my advice, great. If they choose to do something else and they, and well, in the work environment, if they say, okay, no, I heard what you said, but we're, I'm going to go with option, you know, D instead of your option then I go, okay, you know, I did, I did what I was supposed to do and now I can move on. And that, and that's, it's hard when it's your kids because it's really frustrating and you want the best from them. Um, but, uh, you know, y you can't beat yourself up on it, especially as they become adults. If they're still, you know, if they're, if they're making those type of decisions, you can try to communicate it with them. But at the end of the day, you know, I mean, as long as it's not negatively, you know, as long as it's not, costing you your job, your house, your money, you know, whatever, then, I mean, you can only do what you can do. That's my opinion on that anyways. Um, BB says, I read a story and my pets, I read a story and pet my kid's head when I put them to sleep. My oldest is 13 and still likes the attention. Oh, I'm sure they love the attention. You know, it's funny. Every once in a while, my, uh, my oldest two don't ask me to put them to bed, but my, my, uh, 12 year old will uh, periodically, it's like, Hey, you were supposed to tuck me in. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I forgot. You know, especially that happens whenever she takes a shower late and I need to go to sleep and you know, our schedules are a little off sync, but, uh, uh, anyways, that sounded weird, but, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's weird that, you know, the kids still want to know that you love them. Right. So Narges, I hope that you're able to, to make some headway, but at the same time, you know, you, you can't, you can't beat yourself up whenever you're trying to, to help him. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of times people don't want to listen to their parents or their spouse. So 
All right, let me let me check through these comments, and we'll start to try to wrap this show up. Penrose says, all our problems will soon mean nothing. Find a way to enjoy life for those who care about while it lasts and never fear death. It's funny you say that because that's kind of, that is a really, that's like a good, good, uh, well, it's not a sentence, but a good line on how I pretty much approach life now, Penrose. Um, I, I like that. That's a good one. Lorraine says to uh, your kids are blessed to have you, BB touch is so important on, uh, on you, my oldest grandson, 14, and we do the same for him. And it doesn't as does his mother. Yeah. I think that stuff's important too. So, um, okay. So let me try to, Oh, Shannon O'Brien said, I uh, love the book by Chris Gunn. Oh. oh, I know how to say her name. Gunnies. I can't, I'm not saying it wrong. Her first book is also very good. So I've only seen a couple of her videos. So there's just so much stuff. I just don't have as much time. Narja says, John, I was 40 when I ended my 20 year marriage to my first narc. Ooh, first narc. That sucks. If you had another one after that was my fear. Honestly, guys, whenever I left, I was like, oh man, I got to make sure I don't do this again. You know, so I have to figure out what the heck I did to make sure I don't do that. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to try to wrap this up. My back feels like it's about ready to explode on me. So I think I'm going to take, take something to help with that. Um, we're rolling up on an two and a half hours, which I think is a pretty good show. 40, 43 likes with 32 viewers still on. That is awesome, guys. I appreciate it. So I'm not sure if I'm doing a live stream on Saturday. I think technically that's my normal schedule scheduled thing, but I'm trying to figure out, I might have something else planned. So uh, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, sign up for that. And I will let you know if I'm going to do a 7 a.m. live stream on Saturday. Uh, so I'm, I would like to, but I'm, I'm having a scheduling conflict. And part of the issue is going to be I, once we roll into the Christmas to New Year's break, when I have the kids, I am not going to be able, there's going to be like a two to three week period where I am not going to be able to do a live stream. I'm going to still make videos because now that I've figured out my technique on making videos at while at lunch at work, uh, I think that's working out. Okay. Speaking of that, watch out for tomorrow. Uh, this is a little, this is a little Easter egg because I know some, not everybody watches till the end. The video I'm going to post tomorrow, watch till the end until it's completely over. And you might want to turn your volume down at the end because you're, you're going to see a little interesting thing that I have to deal with periodically. And I never thought I was going to actually capture it on camera, but it actually happened. It actually happened today. And uh, you might, might get a kick out of that. So on that, uh, let me look, see who else we're, we're getting, who we have in here. And we will wrap it up. Narja says, Dwayne, it's, it is times like this that I'm mad at myself. Why was I not strong enough to divorce my first ex, even though my dad and uncles refused because back home divorcing is a bad omen. Narja, you can't beat yourself up. You d don't. You know what? You did the best you could do. You, you, you dealt with the situation that you had. You dealt with the influencers that you had, and you made the best decision that you made. You know, it, it, you don't beat yourself up on it. It's, it's, it, there's nothing good going to, to go there. Um, you know, a lot of people stayed a long time. I was in my marriage for 21 years. You know, I can look at it and say, I should have, uh, you know, I should have bailed. I mean, I should have, I should have saw the warning signs and bailed way earlier than my, my kids, which I mean, I'm assuming, you know, they still would have manifested it some way, but you know, maybe they would have had a better loving environment. But I think that, I think that I had to, well, you know, let me put it to you this way. Had I not gone through the experiences I had as a kid, which led me to my ex, which then led me to, well, actually I was joining the military when I, when I did that. So I had the military experience where I learned, I mean, so all of these things have all culminated together. So my, my life experiences with the uh, narcissistic abuse with my own family and with my ex and dealing with my kids, my professional job with the, you know, I mean, I have technical skills to be able to do this type of stuff and photography skills, management skills. Um, I've had to speak in front of large crowds and, and do a lot of stuff. All of this stuff has all culminated to where now I'm at a point, which I know in a million years, I would have never, never even imagined this. Here I am 
with what 31 people online right now helping you guys through this right and i think because of the experience i have and and all of those things that have happened it's led me to a point to do that so um you know i mean had i made different decisions yeah my life would be different but would i be helping people i don't know maybe maybe not you know would my life been easier yeah probably i probably would have been more financially successful i probably would have been in a different environment um but i'm okay with where where life has taken me and what i've been able to do with it and the fact that i'm able to to reach out through the power of the internet and technology and share my story and that it's and that it's helped some of you folks take you know to to take a situation and turn it around and make you know make some progress so so do not beat yourself up on that Nargis. you know so says yes six years later after divorcing my first ex i ended up with another narc and divorced him five months later hey at least you at least you realized it you know and now you're you're learning more and you're not going to make that mistake again i'm i would be very surprised if you did so all right guys so on that i am going to wrap this up uh if you you know what if, if i don't know if you guys saw the little intro thing that i added on this you may have missed it i don't know if it worked love to hear what you think about that if you're if you watch this on a replay just put it in the comments below uh and i will chat with you guys on the next video again watch out for the one tomorrow and sign up for the newsletter so i can let you know about the what's going on this weekend if i am going to be able to do a live stream or not so on that have a great night be easy on yourself guys don't beat yourself up all of us have been dealt a, a very difficult hand and we're making the best decisions we possibly can the decision you made last week if it was based on the, you know you made the best decision you can make on the information you had you're learning you're learning to make better decisions that's fine don't beat yourself up on the old ones on that i will chat with you guys later have a great evening and uh, i will chat with you guys in the next video take care